Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 13th uh, meeting of the Ashland Planning Board. Um, before we get started tonight, I needed to read um, uh, a little bit about the town's response to COVID-19. The town of Ashland, in response to the COVID-19 um, coronavirus, is currently following guidance from the Ashland Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and the CDC in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting is being conducted remotely and being um, recorded as well. Um, that said, I just wanted to take a minute before introducing the agenda to introduce the planning board. We have a significant number of people coming on the meeting already and um, more coming on as well. So I would just, um, when when I give your name, if the members of the planning board could just uh, give a wave of your physical hand, not your digital hand, so that members of the audience know who the planning board are and will understand, um, you know, when we're speaking about the projects, who, who we are. So um, my name is Tricia Kendall. I am the current chair of the planning board. Lakshmi Christian. Lakshmi is our clerk. Uh, Deepa Venkat. Anna Tesmaninsky, and our new, newest member, uh, Marcella Arjona, and Kevin McLean. I'd also like to introduce Peter Machik, who is the Ashland Town Planner, and Emma, who doesn't have her camera on, but she is there as well, who are, is, there she is, <laughs> our Assistant Town Planner. So I think it's important that everyone hopefully can uh, um, put a, a face um, to the names and voices that are discussing uh, projects here tonight. Um, so just to review very briefly the agenda for this evening, we actually have three public hearings scheduled. One of those has requested a continuance and we'll deal with that one first. Then we have um, 311 Pleasant Street, um, which we, a public hearing which will be opening and we expect to be discussing that project for about 60 minutes, about an hour. Um, from that point, we will be opening the second public hearing, which is the 501 Pond Street, um, and be discussing that likely for about 60 minutes as well. Um, those two meetings, we fully expect they're larger projects. We fully expect them to go multiple meetings. Um, and we'll get, give you more information about those um, public hearings as, as we get to them. Um, in addition, after that, this um, at, after those things this evening, we will be discussing a potential candidate for the design review committee. And then we have some meeting minutes and other scheduling discussions for the planning board, which are very exciting and anyone is welcome to stay and listen to. Um, that said, I think the first thing on our agenda is the um, 355 West Union Street site plan review. Peter, can you can you just fill us in where this is right now? Oh, so uh, uh, town planner Peter Matchak. Uh, so uh, uh, chair, I can tell you that in a conversation with the uh, applicant engineer, Mr. George Connors, um, after the last meeting, uh, we really talked about the look and the architectural uh, aesthetics of what they were proposing with the permanent open seating um, and the concerns that we had concerning the concrete block. And uh, the applicant was still in conversations uh, with their architect to produce uh, renderings. Um, and so they are still waiting on renderings to submit to the planning board. And so this uh, project is in a holding pattern uh, until they can kind of um, get some new rendering from their architect. So I think at, the, at this point, you could um, continue them. Um, the applicant's attorney, George Connors, has uh, filed a formal uh, request for continuance. Does anyone from the planning board have any questions about that continuance, continuance before we go on? And Peter, when would be when would we be continuing that um, public hearing until? So, um, uh, excuse me. So our next meeting is going to be on the twenty seventh of January. Uh, hopefully, I will have rendering by then. Uh, if not, we could move it to our first meeting in February. Uh, without naming the date, I know we are going to talk about our February schedule coming up later in the meeting. 
Um, but at this point, I think the 27th is, is uh, a good date to continue. Great, right. sounds good. Um, could someone, would someone like to make a motion for the continuance? Sure, I can make a motion, Tricia. So Please. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing on 355 West Union Street site plan review um, and continue that to our next hearing in January. All right, I second that. Thank you. Um, we'll take a roll call vote starting with Lakshmi. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Bowenka, aye. Anna Tesmanitsky, aye. You're on, Marcella. Marcella Hona, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. That is 500. That public hearing will be continued to January 27th. All right. Our next item on the agenda is um, a public hearing for 311 Pleasant Street Special Permit and Site Plan Review. Since we are just opening this public hearing tonight, we will need to read the um, uh, to read the application and okay. actually we'll take care of that. So the Ashland Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, Jan 30, 2022 at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom video conference to hear the petition of next grid PO Box 7775, hashtag 3069, San Francisco, California, 94120, requesting a special permit site plan review and design plan review as per chapter 48, section six of the Massachusetts Zoning Act and chapter 282, uh, 8.1 floodplain overlay district, 9.3 special permits, 9.6 design plan review and 9.4 site plan review of the Ashland bylaws. The applicant is proposing the development of solar canopies structures within the parking area as an accessory structure. All work shall be within the limits of the existing parking lot, and there shall be no proposed changes to the existing building. The property in question is located at 311 Pleasant Street, assessor map 13, lot 52, and is within the residential B zoning district. The property is owned by the Ashland Memorial Associates, care of Richard H. Smith, president, 311 Pleasant Street, Ashland, Mass 01721. Parties wishing to be heard on this matter should submit comments to the planning board ahead of time and or appear at the time and place indicated above. Materials may be viewed by appointment at the town hall during normal business hours or on our town website. Great, thank you. Peter, do you want to um, take yes. over and introduce our speaker? Sure, so before I hand it over to our applicant, I just want to uh, brief the board real quick. So this property is 311 Pleasant Street, uh, locally known as the, v, the VFW. Uh, it is across from the uh, Ashland train station uh, area. Um, this parcel is zoned residential B as noted. And um, within that, the proposed use uh, is seen by the zoning enforcement officer in Ashland as an extension of a pre existing non conforming use. Therefore, the applicant has recently gone before the ZBA uh, and has secured, a, um, has secured a special permit for the use uh, of the implementation of the solar panels. The applicant tonight, in front of the zoning, uh, excuse me, in front of the planning board, is here for two things. Number one, the applicant is here applying for a special permit to build uh, solar canopy structures within a floodplain. Um, the back parking lot of the V is within the, um, uh, the suburb of the floodplain. And then the second thing would be for site plan approval. And so those are the two elements uh, that um, Mr. Nathan Collins, who is here representing the applicant, um, will need to touch on in his application. Um, after the planning board, um, not after the planning board, but um, in addition to permitting with the planning board, um, the applicant will also need to be received permitting from our conservation commission uh, because work is within the 100 feet of a um, obviously wetland, which would be the river, and the work and structures are within the 200 foot river um, boundary line, excuse me, buffer. So, um, 
if the planning board doesn't have any questions, I would ask uh, Nathan Collins to step forward, introduce himself, and uh, please present the application. Thank you, Peter. Um, for the record, my name is Nathan Collins, I'm principal with CLC Design. Uh, again, here on behalf of uh, NextGrid Inc., the applicant uh, who's proposing these uh, solar canopies. Um, do I have the ability to share my screen? Yes, you do. So just, can everyone see that okay? Yep. Um, so this is just kind of an aerial photo just to give everyone a general idea of the, the property. Uh, 311 Pleasant Street, uh, approximately two acre parcel uh, located in the uh, residence B district. Um, as, as Peter noted, uh, it's existing uh, VFW. Uh, they've been owners since the 50s. Um, we have been in front of uh, ZBA and, and uh, received a uh, special permit for um, continuing the, the use, uh, non-conforming use uh, in the residential district. Um, most of the site, as you can see, is impervious. Uh, consists of a parking lot, approximately 100 spots with the building. Uh, there is a small vegetated area in the rear of the parcel. Um, that is where the bordering vegetated wetland is, as well as the Sudbury River. Uh, there's residential properties to both the um, east and west, and uh, just south of the property, again, across the street, is the church. Um, so going over the plans, uh, the applicant again is proposing three new solar canopies um, in the rear of the property, all of which fall within the limits of the existing bituminous concrete parking lot. Um, as you can see here, there's one larger canopy that will be constructed using uh, a series of six footings. Uh, those, those will be, um, the, the final foundation hasn't been determined, but typically those are drilled footings. Um, you know, depending on groundwater elevations, that may change to a spread footing, um, but current plan is for uh, drilled footings. And two smaller canopies separated uh, with, uh, again, three individual um, footings for each one of those canopies. All of these structures um, are um, outside of the setback requirements for this district, uh, particularly, obviously, there's there's no change to the front setback. Um, I, we, we provided kind of a, a zoning data breakdown. So uh, right now, the, the side yard in this lot is uh, 10 feet, and we're providing a little over 20. Uh, the rear yard is 30 feet, and we're providing a little over 40 feet. Um, in terms of setbacks. Uh, lot frontage is not changing and, and obviously the, the lot area is not changing um, based on what we're proposing. These particular canopies as designed, um, they do not have a closed deck system. So um, the, the way these are constructed, bear with me. Oh, my computer's slow. So this is a typical cross-section of the canopies. Um, this being a larger one. Um, so again, as I said, this is a basically a C-channel system. So as stormwater flows and hits this this the solar panels, it will still drain vertically through, um, which again should have no impact to existing stormwater. Um, there are no structures in terms of um, catch basins or manholes within that existing parking lot. Everything just sheet flows. Um, and because we're, you know, within the footprint of the existing parking lot, we're, we're not adding any impervious area. The layout of these has been done so um, we're not impacting any of the existing parking spots. Uh, the larger one is centered on the, the middle aisle for the parking. Um, in addition, um, the, the smaller panels are, are um, located outside of the limits of that parking spot. So the, the V, if you will, uh, will not be losing any capacity as it relates to existing parking. Um, in addition, if you look at the 
uh, site plan. We're maintaining um, a aisle around the entire perimeter of the existing building for fire protection, as well as the existing aisle in between these uh, for kind of fire access. Um, there's no change to the, the access aisles. And the height to the bottom of these structures are designed that it will accommodate um, a typical uh, ladder truck for any fire department. Uh, the, the height to the bottom of these is at the low point is 14 feet to the understructure. Um, again, as we are within a floodplain, uh, which, which triggers a special permit requirement, uh, this red line here indicates the flood elevation for this particular site. However, the, the total loss in terms of compensatory storage in this area is just over two cubic feet total, uh, just because these columns are constructed with an I-beam that has a cross-sectional area of about 0.11 square feet. Um, so again, it, it really has minimal to no impact in terms of um, flood capacity or issues associated with loss of flood storage within this area. Um, Again, that's something that will be presented, uh, as Peter said, to the, the Conservation Commission, uh, being that we're also in their jurisdiction as well. Um, that's really all I have as it relates to kind of what the proposed project is. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Mr. Collins, while you're on that slide, could you just explain, there's, there's a number of um, dashed lines um, and different colors of lines on there. And, and obviously it's hard it's hard to read especially for the uh for people who may not have looked at it could you could you explain what those various lines mean i'd be happy to um so i'll kind of work my way down the plan uh this dash line actually represents the center line of the sudbury river which um, per the the deed is the limits of their the property line and then as we work down this dash line represents the top of bank of the sudbury river uh, this red line represents the limits of the bordering vegetated wetland. Um, working our way down, this green line is the 25 foot no disturb buffer. Um, again, our structures are all outside of that. Um, we, we included a 50 foot buffer, but that's really not applicable to the, uh, the town. And these, this dash blue line is the 100 foot buffer. And then we have our 100 and 200 foot uh, inner and outer riparian zones associated with the um, River uh, Protection Act. These dash lines represent the perimeter of what the solar canopy will be. So again, you have your uh, six footings. Those will be I-beams. Um, and, and again, these represent the limits of the um, the smaller solar canopies. So looking at the cross section, I apologize, these PDFs, once you scan them, they become very large files. Um, looking at the cross sections, those dash lines represent, um, you know, the outer, the outer edges of those canopies, as you see here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a couple of questions, if I may. Oh, go ahead, Marcelo. Thank you. Uh, so the the first question is in in terms of the of the um, of the uh, directly adjacent uh, neighbors. I actually drove through this site and I've been there a couple of times. So uh, it, it 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 seems uh, uh, pretty easy to understand. Uh, have the neighbors? Uh, uh, Provided any any comment or, or complaint about uh, about these uh, these canopies? It seems like the neighbor to the to the east. Uh, there's absolutely no vegetation. I know in the in the submission it says that the vegetation fully surrounds the residential area. Um, so I'm I'm wondering if the neighbors have have provided any letter about that position. For, in terms of um, I I spoke to one a butter today. Uh, I think they reached out based on the, uh, they were notified as part of the uh, NOI application. Um, I forwarded 
the woman plans uh, electronically, uh, but I have not received any other comments associated with the submission. Uh, I can't speak to the, I can't speak to as to whether the town has received anything. So, so the plans do not in, in incorporate any landscaping improvements towards the neighbor that it's more exposed. We we are not proposing. So clearly, this side's well vegetated. Uh, there's there's established vegetation that again we're not we're not touching. Uh, there's there's no um, removal of any vegetation as part of the proposed work. Um, so this is the only area that's uh, currently kind of it's just lawn area. Um, but at, at, as proposed, we are not proposing any vegetation on the project. Okay, and my last question is the, 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 the life uh, um, of, of these structures. I think I read in the application that, that they will be dismantled after a certain number of years. Um, and uh, I, I wonder what, what would happen if for whatever reason, uh, before that, that uh, deadline occurs, the site reverts to a residential use, that that would make them not non-conforming. Uh, is there any provision for that? Um, the short answer is no. Uh, again, we we received a, um, we didn't really get a change of use. Um, we just received an approval for an existing non-conforming use, um, more so for the building um, and, you know, the accessory structures. Uh, the non-conforming use is, is more associated with um, the V um, being a you know, private club in a residential district. But we, we didn't, you know, we didn't request any change to the actual zoning of the, the residence B district. Thank you. I just have one question. Um, Go ahead. Sorry, Trish. You want to? No, um, please. Go yeah. On. The uh, question I have is: was, uh, was ever a combination of canopies plus panels on the roof of the building uh, considered for this project, or was it get go? It was kind of only canopies was the option uh, that was looked into. My understanding: uh, the interconnection submission uh, was always just canopies. There, there weren't ever any. Um, panels proposed on the roof of the existing building. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to make a note to the planning board that um, uh, due to looking at the presentation on the screen, which I think is important, um, make sure you it might be helpful if you raise your digital hand and Emma, if you can help me keep track of that, um, uh, that who might be ready to speak because I can't see everyone at one time. Will do. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, I have a question about, um, you know, I know uh, the parking lot isn't being um, replaced in any way right now. And this may be a question that tips over into Conservation Commission. Um, but we have, there, there's new, um, I'm sure you're aware, stormwater regulation, um, new stormwater re regulations by the state in the past few years. So at some point, if and when this parking lot is redone, it may be redone in a, in a different way in order to meet some of those new stormwater regulations, I would assume. Um, how do these, how does the structure of the canopies, um, are they affected in any way by that? Is that something that, um, is they're easy to work around a different kind of paving system would be, um, complementary to these structures or. Yeah. So the, the footings themselves, I mean, it would, it would be similar to having to work around a light pole in a parking lot. So mm -hmm. it, it really wouldn't impact um, any contractor's ability to do any construction um, around or within close proximity to the, the panels. Um, you know, the, the I guess the one limit would be the height of equipment that you may be able to use um, if you were to, you know, set any drainage structures or any subsurface leaching structures, but uh, 14 feet would be, you know, more than adequate because um, you're, you're not talking um, deep excavations and large construction equipment that would be needed. 
I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. To the extent of um, the extent of my knowledge on it, I have one other question. Um, you know, one part of the one important part of the, the purview of the planning board, and we read through the, your um, special permit conditions, which you, you've answered pretty thoroughly. Um, different issues about uh, parking and utilities and things that we need to go through as part of a special permit process. And the tricky one is always neighborhood character and social structures to me, right? Um, so, and, and this site is, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's kind of a tricky one in, in a lot of ways. It's, it's almost on the opposite side of the street of where it should be given, given the uses and um, that a silver, solar, the solar overlay for this street is located all along the other side of the street, but not included on this side of the street most of the, well, at least to a great stretch on this side of the street is, is residential properties, except for this property, which obviously has been there a long time and is, is, is widely used by the community for, for a number of things. Um, so, uh, but, but yet there's the, the thing about, um, you know, and I think Marcelo is getting into this a, a little bit as well about still, how do you be a good neighbor to um, to those single family homes that are there, to the to residents that are that are living there full time, and so one of the things I was wondering is about you know how um, you know how much the panels are seen from the street. I know that this site slopes downward. Um, I I don't remember how much. Um, so I was wondering if that had had been looked at in in any kind of way to understand. When you're driving along Pleasant Street or you're walking along that sidewalk, how how low are these relative to where you are in the sidewalk? Where are these sitting? So right now the grade at the street is approximately 201. Mm -hmm. um, and the grade in proximity to where these will be set is about six feet lower. Um, and again, with a, with a height to the bottom of the understructure of, of 14 feet, um, sight line wise, you, you're probably looking, you know, more at kind of the, the under just front underside of the front panels. Cause the, the way these are, are sloped, um, again, to achieve the maximum, um, absorption of the sun is, uh, there's a slight tilt. So the low spot is, uh, on the Southern edge, uh, for, for all of these canopies. Um, so, you know, the, obviously the, as you, as you drive this direction, um, this side is, is very well vegetated, uh, mm -hmm. with evergreen, um, um, again, pretty much the, the entire, uh, the entire run. Um, so, you know, visibility will be limited, um, in this direction, you know, as, uh, uh Mr. Arona had mentioned, you know, it's, it is a little more. Um, open, if you will, uh, in terms of sight line. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, as you drive, you know, you'd have to turn your head, you know, pretty, pretty sharp to the right, uh, to get a, a view of them. Uh, certainly this building, uh, is a lot higher, um, and will provide some, uh, mitigation to, to sight lines as you drive down Pleasant street. Um, there really is an opportunity to provide any vegetation on the front of the parcel. You know, there's, there's two curb cuts and it's mostly paved. Um, you know, the, the only other potential for, and I'd have to explore where the actual property line is, um, along this edge would be to potentially for some evergreen on that side, um, to appease, you know, a neighbor. Thank you. Are there other uh, questions from the planning board? I guess I one mean, more. I, uh, oh, go ahead. I, 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 I was going to say that um, I guess it's a comment and kind of a reinforcement of the prior questions. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm excited about this project. I think it's really exciting to see this level of um, solar, if you will, happening. So I wanted to thank Thank you for that. Um, I think this is great. And as you know, the town just passed at, re at a recent town meeting, the net zero resolution. And I think this is exactly what we need to start seeing in Ashland. Um, 
personally, you know, I'm, I, I'm torn as far as, hey, maybe it's good to see this as we pass, because if we see it, maybe we'll want more of it. So part of me is like, maybe some residents want to see it, but other residents may not. So I, I, I do think that we should ask that neighbor what their thoughts are um, and honor them to the best of our ability. But if that neighbor doesn't mind the lack of the, the vegetation, I'm okay without it because I think there could be a public, a public benefit to having some visibility of something kind of cool that we as a community are supporting through our net zero initiatives. Um, and it seems fairly minimal as far as what the view is. So I'm leaning more towards checking in with that neighbor and really making sure the neighbor, the neighbor's concerns are addressed. Um, and if you're comfortable doing that as, a, as an applicant, that would be good to know, uh, rather than requiring you to plan something that the neighbor may be more neutral about. Um, and then I'll add, I really liked how your application has evolved. When I was looking at your September application to the zoning Board of Appeals, I was a little concerned when you wrote that the neighborhood does not have much character. <laughs> um, and for your November submission, you you evolved. So that was kind of cool. And I wanted to acknowledge that because I think that shows some improvement in how we as a community are starting to uh, improve our applications and pay attention to each other. So I, I wanted to give a shout out to that. Um, and you know that that's my only kind of question, I guess, if you are comfortable continuing with your reach out to that neighbor and addressing their concerns. Yeah, we, we have no issues um, talking with neighbors um, or butters. I know I, I just looked at um, the names of the owners. So this this was the woman, uh, Teresa Crandall, I think you pronounce her name. She was the one I sent plans to today. Um, this property may be a rental. I'll have to look at, I know one of the abutters had a, uh, their mailing address was uh, in another town in, um, in Massachusetts. Um, but sir, I can, you know, we have our abutters list and I can confirm that lot and certainly reach out to them uh, to get their feedback. Um, I think that'd be really helpful so we can make a, a comfortable decision as far as visibility, because it sounds like it's not gonna be particularly visible from the front. Um, and is there a school across the way, the Metro West Christian Academy, is that right? Or or it's more to the left? It, it's, it's, it's here. Dream. Gotcha. It's a daycare. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then okay. the, the MBTA parking lot is here. And Okay, thank you. All right. Are there any other uh, questions from the planning board? Um, then I, if not, we'll open it up to public comments and then we can come back to more of a planning board discussion um, assuming we have time to do so. Oh. Emma, I will let you um, take care of the hands rate being raised. Great, yes, I'll just ask everyone who'd like to make a comment to raise, click the raise hand button at the bottom of their screen, um, or I don't think we have anyone by phone, but star nine if you're with us on the phone. Um, and I'll invite uh, Kathy Rooney to unmute. Hi, everybody. I think I did, actually. Yes, uh, you're unmuted. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so at the bottom of the river end of that parking lot, since there seems to be some special permits that are being sought here, I'm wondering um, what else could be done to help improve um, the sheet flow that comes off that parking lot and filter and clean it. So I'm going to suggest uh, things like bioretention cells, planters or swales or vegetated curb extensions or swales um, or using some combination of those at the bottom of the parking lot. And it might be another device on the neighbor side if the neighbor wants screening to help um, put some trees in a device like that um, and they get a lot of water um, it require less irrigation um, as long as they could tolerate the the occasional inundation and then um, it would also create some of the buffering that the neighbor might like that's my comments thank you thanks Kathy okay um, I'll invite Joe Magnani to unmute uh, good evening uh, 
Thank you, Madam Chair, for acknowledging me. I, I do have a question for uh, Mr. Collins uh, with respect to uh, one of the screens that he showed. It showed a cross section of the uh, uh, column that was going to be uh, implanted in to support the, uh, the structure itself. I'm kind of curious. I couldn't see the uh, number. Thank you. That's what I'm looking at. I'd love to be able to see that. How deep is that structure going to be buried into the ground? So um, again, these are kind of typical cross sections um, as you know, if this project moves forward and gets approved, uh, we'll have to apply for a building permit. And with that building permit, we'll have final, you know, stamped structural drawings. Um, typically they range from 10 to 12 feet deep, depending on, um, soil conditions with a diameter of approximately three foot. So again, similar to um, uh, maybe a little bit wider than a typical like light pole foundation mm -hmm. that you would see in a parking lot. Uh, but again, mo most of that, uh, this details actually, uh, th these typically get set flush, um, the concrete uh, right to the pavement. So we provided this typical cross section just to give a, a general um, aesthetic of this, the canopy itself, but uh, the final structural drawings um, will be submitted with the building permit. Uh, thank you. Uh, a follow-up question to that. Uh, my concern is because of the uh, proximity of you digging uh, roughly 12 feet into the ground uh, across the street, there was a, there is still a large um, hazard uh, structure, structural uh, location that's been cleaned up, but there's a, uh, there is a potential of that being uh, set across the street uh, in, in some sort of uh, swale that uh, could be underground there. Has there been any uh, site uh, digging or any uh, drilling to, to test to make sure that there isn't anything uh, hazardous or uh, to, to that location when, Joe, you, when you start to go into the ground. Joe, are you, are you talking about the Nyanza plume? Yeah, I'm talking about the Nyanza plume. Okay. Because it's in, it's in that area, Trish. Yes, that's, why, mm -hmm. that's, that's why I'm kind of concerned. Thank you. Uh, we, we have not done any exploratory test pits um, in, proxim in location of the parking lot. Okay. Um, I'm sure that that'll be brought up at, at, at other discussions with other boards, but I just wanted to ask that question in advance to make you aware of it anyway. Thank you, Mr. Collins. We're good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Joe. Emma, who's next? I'll invite uh, Mark DeSoni to unmute. <clears throat> Good evening, there. thank you. I'm just going through some, some of my usual paperwork that I have from uh, the, the town codes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask just probably a couple of short questions of probably how it fits. So one of the questions in, in the, in the um, it's titled zoning, so can I go in there or no? Um, what are you, what are you asking to do, Mark? Um, I'm, I'm going through the, the town bylaws, the town codes, mm -hmm. to ask my questions, and I have the I'm on page two eighty two, on think, dot ninety seven page, and it says zoning. I think you'll have, you have to read off to us what you're looking at and and what you want to discuss about it in the form of your question. <clears throat> okay. So I'll just go on and ask, and if it can be fit, if we can answer, it can be answered. Okay. 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 I'm I'm at eight under under the code eight point three. It's eight point three point three. Is there any dialogue or logic behind as a right sit-in for this? As of right sighting. Sighted. Yeah, sighted. Uh, ex excuse me, uh, can I take answer Mark's Please. question? Peter, yep. Hey Mark, uh, so 8.3 is the Voltaic in, um, Installation Overlay District. Uh, as yep. noted earlier in the application, uh, th this property, uh, 311 Pleasant, 
is not within and or covered by that overlay district. That overlay district is actually across the street uh, uh, of Pleasant Street. So this that this property is not covered under the overlay district. Oh. Then um okay. Then the rest to the rest is um on the Ashland Code, building permits and it's it, is this, did the building inspector get to see this? Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. These are structures and they would, they would uh, all structures have to receive a building permit. Uh, we're not there yet, obviously, Mark, but, uh, but yes, these would have to be approved by the building commissioner. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna ask him, even though like, could be on the wrong track. Is there any uh, one or three line electrical diagrams to go with this? There were, uh, yes, there were diagrams submitted for our interconnection permit. Uh, we did include them with, um, as, as a reference document <clears throat> um, with our application. So these, these were the interconnection plans approved by, by Eversource. So again, any, any proposed solar canopy um, whether it's ground mounted or uh, whether it's a parking lot has to get approved um, for connection to the grid prior to, you know, any, um, any movement forward. Um, and this, this particular project has been approved by. And all of those connections are underground, obviously. Uh, there, yes, there's one. Uh, so uh, there's a, a new utility pole that would be installed along the existing overhead. And, and this is all underground that's correct okay um how about any is there any site controls that's going to be um involved in this we we have proposed erosion control if that's what you're referring to um, uh, project proponents shall submit documents or actual proposed access and controls of the project site um, mark what are you reading for mark is there a is that your question? Yeah, that's, 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 that is a question. Like I said, I could be going down the wrong path, but uh, it's just, I'm gonna go down anyways. The applicant here does have uh, a, a, a ten, a, an agreement, I would say with the owner, Mark, so they do have control in the right to apply for this permit. Okay. And, and keep on correcting me if, if I'm going down the wrong path, anybody, please. Um, you were, you were you were talking about the setbacks, which is as I'm, I'm looking at it right now is is the basic back of the parking lot by the Subway River and the uh, buffer distance and all that, right? Yeah, all, I think all the setbacks right. were were okay, Mark. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I I I did pick up from the for the the photo chat the photo part of the uh, bylaw and. Everything on the th the three, okay. I might be able to. I might be able to get this one in. Would there be any um, frequency controls and um, voltage controls that's going to be coming out of those? Um, out of them. Uh, there's inverter. There's inverters for each canopy that are, are mounted on the columns um, that control the voltage back into the system. Uh, and those those get put in a, a utility cabinet. So they that, won't that's be, Okay, <coughs> last one. So they won't um, interfere with um, any frequencies of the, the neighbors involved or going through telephone wires or, or, or the uh, regular outdoor wires from there? No, no, they will not. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thanks, Mark. I'll invite uh, Joel Arbeitman to unmute. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we are. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak to this. It was something I was not planning on, but I'm glad I'm here. Uh, I, I also want to thank the board's uh, sensitivity to the importance of the character of the neighborhood. But I think that's very important. But I think the neighborhood extends far beyond the discussion that's been held thus far. It is certainly perhaps most important to address 
the potential concerns of the immediate abutters, and I respect that. But I'm looking at uh, on a Google map right now, and, and we can look right as this picture, if it can stay steady for a minute, I'm looking at uh, two areas of very significant concern. You know, we're concerned about the, uh, the visual impact this project might have on the immediate abutter to the east. And I just want to emphasize that I, too, am a very strong supporter of solar. Uh, you know, we obviously need to do something to uh, mitigate the ravages of climate change. I want to emphasize that there was a time that I may have been the sole voice. I was certainly a very lonely voice pushing for uh, the deployment of sol solar panels at Ashland High School, which eventually uh, became a very important project for the town. So I'm, I'm very supportive. However, having said that, I'm also a supporter of open space and the aesthetics of the community. When I look at two projects that the town has run, and I see Roberta Sulman here, so I'll defer most of the second part of this to her. But I, I want to emphasize that we have spent a lot of money in this town on two projects. One was along Ponderosa Road to take advantage of the scenic beauty of the Sudbury River that lies immediately north of this project. It's vi visible right now on your screen. Uh, it's probably closer to the solar panels uh, to the north than the, than the building is. Uh, so uh, that's one great concern. Uh, looking at the trees on Google Maps, it does not look like those are evergreen trees along the river there. And uh, what I guess I'd be encouraging the planning board to do relative to Ponderosa Road before they go ahead and approve this project is to get some really good pictures of what the view is going to look like uh, for such a scenic, beautiful area behind the building uh, along the Sudbury River. Uh, this is a fairly kind of commercial looking project. I, I appreciate Anna's uh, interest in uh, promoting solar and having more people become aware of it, but this is a really sensitive uh, scenic area here. And I'm very concerned about the impact of these particular panels as I am for the, all the money the town has already spent on Marathon Park, which lies, if you can see the residents immediately to the west along Pleasant Street, immediately adjacent to the uh, target property here. Uh, just beyond that is, and you can see it on the, on the picture that's being shown right now, Marathon Park. When I go there, I usually walk all the way up to the river. There's a beautiful little waterfalls there. The sound is great. The scenery, scenery is great. Uh, the applicant's statement, and I have not been out there, I'm not questioning this, but looking on Google Maps, I don't see a whole lot of um, evergreens, number one. And even if there are evergreens, I guess the question I have is if, if you use Marathon Park and walk up to the river where that beautiful waterfall is, which I've done many times, and you look uh, to the northeast, you're, you're not looking at beautiful fall foliage. You're not looking along the riverbed there. You're looking at solar panels. So I guess my request to the board is to request from the applicant to go out and take about 50 pictures that could be presented to the board at a subsequent meeting or perhaps have the, the board go out and do a site walk out there, a site visit, and uh, make an assessment about what the aesthetic impact of those panels is going to be on two key town open space parcels. One is the Marathon Park, on which, again, we've spent a fair amount of money. And two is Ponderosa Road, which lies immediately parallel to the Sudbury River, uh, just north of the panels, just out of view of the current picture. So that's all I have to say. I, I, I hope the board can follow through and, and make a, a, a good objective assessment of what the situation is there regarding the aesthetics of the nearby open space parks. Thank you. Understood. Thank, thank you, Jewel. Uh, I'll invite Roberta Sulman to unmute. Hi, thank you. Thanks for the chance to say a few words. Um, I apologize for coming in the middle of this. I had a work uh, Zoom that just ended at quarter of eight. So, um, and I hadn't planned to be here for this. I was planning to be here for another aspect of the planning board meeting. Um, as well versed in the mapping as Joel Arbeitman is, I am not as well versed in mapping and have been known among my friends to be um, map challenged. That being said, 
Um, I did see an earlier um, sketch that was up here that showed how close this solar panel project is to the final phase of where the river walk is going to be. And the final phase of the river walk is planned to uh, come from behind where the VFW is and right behind Marathon Park and come over to the river and can then connect um, over to the train station. And there's another bridge that we're planning to build. And again, it's an open space, beautiful area. Um, and we have it's not just the money, it is the beauty of that space and that area and what's already been done with regard to the river walk with the observation deck and the bridge. Um, and I really would urge the planning board to go for a site walk. The open space and recreation committee would be happy to accompany you and show you what our plans are. Um, and I would urge everybody to pull out the river walk um, engineering drawings and see exactly how it will be impacted. And if in any way it's gonna be adversely impacted, um, I think this project needs to make an adjustment or a rethink or something because um, it would just be tragic to um, adversely affect or damage the beauty of the river walk and the Sudbury River and all that we're trying to accomplish there um, by having this decision be made um, without full information. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a quick question, um, Mr. Collins, have you, have you looked at the, um, the solar panels over the high school? I was wondering how similar these structures are to the ones at Ashland High School as, as a point of comparison, um, or isn't the exact look of, of them determined yet? I, I personally have not been to the high school. Um, okay. You know, this is generally the aesthetic. And again, you can, you can get creative in terms of uh, power coating steel or, or color of steel. Uh, okay. These are hot. These are higher, but uh, generally the the framing underneath, and then the panels just sit directly on top of that framing, uh, and then this is uh, typical column cross section. I can kind of zoom in if if you want. Um, okay. So this, that we this, yeah. this 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 particular canopy, you know, the the columns, the steel was uh, colored green, um, you know, to help kind of mm. mask the aesthetic. Um, mm. Okay. But we, we are proposing any lights, um, you know, under, uh, like, if you look at this canopy, this actually has lighting underneath. Uh, we're not proposing any of that. There, there's no lighting today on that parking lot. Uh, so there, there's no um, safety lighting that we have to replicate. Um, and would you, would you be willing, if I could, would you be willing to plan some, presume, assume for a second, you know, the planning board decides to dig deeper and get kind of a visual from the river side and concludes that the view is a little bit, requires some adjustment. Are you willing to kind of shift color schemes or design elements um, and or maybe plant a couple of trees or sort of discuss that? Are you kind of open to that? Uh, you know, certainly uh, vegetation, um, in terms of landscaping is I, I wouldn't imagine my applicant is opposed to that. Um, obviously, um, you know, this is a, a business for them. So it, it, there can come to a point where um, a project may not seem, um, I guess, as um, feasible, you know, based on, you know, uh, development costs versus, um, you know, long-term long-term cost so that, you know, depending what that was, it would just it would have to be a conversation I would need to have with the applicant uh, next grid. Uh, he, you, he you, yeah. Sorry, are he you, unfortunately ahead, couldn't sorry. make it today. Yeah, he, um, yep. the, Daniel Serber with next grid, um, he actually, uh, as we speak, maybe at the hospital, his, his wife is giving oh. birth. So <laughs> that's why, that's why he, uh, he wasn't able to attend tonight's hearing. But um, I, again, having worked with them on multiple projects in multiple towns, um, they're always willing to work with the town and um, abutters and, and make things as um, as pleasing as, as possible. 
If, if I may, I can um, go a little further than what, what um, Anna just asked Mr. Collins. Um, if you can put the site plan again on the screen, uh, I, I think that uh, the request of maybe really being careful on how things look from the other side, I think is very important. I, I, I'm, I'm in, in, in very inclined to, to, um, to be in agreement with Joe when, when, when we talk about the importance of that uh, natural resource that is the river and the river walk, uh, especially if there's something planned there. Uh, I think that's very important. I think that uh, beyond plantings or or colors for for the structure of these of these elements, um, one thing that you might entertain is that if you see the sequence in which the site works, uh, you know if you go to the site plan. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I apologize. I'm trying to. <laughs> I think I keep skipping over it. Uh. And while 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 this regenerates, uh, one of the things, and, and I'm uh, I too are I'm, I'm a, a very strong advocate of, uh, of increasing renewable um, energy production on site. Uh, however, the, 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 uh, somebody talked about a commercial look to it. And, and solar arrays do tend to look commercial when they are, they are extensive. Um, and if you, if you go through a mass pike, you see that there's, uh, the, the, there have been beautiful berms of, of grass that have been completely covered, like simply with solar panels. And they're producing um, energy, but but they they can be a little hard to look at. I, I think the, the the street has a, a certain look uh, that 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 is busy and and what have you. So the first canopy seems to be appropriate. I think one thing that you might want to to check is in break it down the the, the the canopies on the back to make them instead of two large canopies, maybe four smaller ones that can be a little gentler from from the other side to look at along with some vegetation. So I just wanted to. Um, to, to suggest that, that you might investigate that. You, you're referring to, so four smaller instead of two? Is that well, I, I think if you, if you go from, 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 from hard to soft, uh, you start dissolving into the, into the natural environment of the river, uh, the, if you go from large to small or, or, or a sequence of smaller, it, it would be gentler to the eye if, if we conclude that 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 is going to become an, 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 an a visual problem so that that would be another another way to mitigate that perhaps so you just have to mm -hmm. be i don't know if you're willing to investigate that yeah, I think it's I, again, again i would have to talk to you know we, we do our layout based on panel count um mm -hmm. if if we could separate it out it, it, you would actually probably end up adding more footings um, you know, because you would need at least two per to support, you know, an array. Um, so this, these six footings would likely become uh, eight footings. Um, or but, you can, I mean, I, you could consider some gaps in between the panels. You may not get the full count, but uh, they don't look like a like a like a full plane uh, that's very extensive. So. I, I think the point is that the um, the large middle panel, even though it's larger, um, is is in some ways more um, easily easily acceptable than the two smaller ones that that um, get cro closer to the river. That the larger one seems kind of of the building; it's very much related to the building and kind of read it that way. Where the two smaller ones, even though they're smaller, seem to be encroaching on that natural environment more and so there, there may be the ones that that stick out to us more as um potentially you know to potentially visually problematic i do think it's a good idea if um if the planning board i mean would have to look at our schedule obviously and see if we're um, um happy to you know strap on our boots and and go take a go take a look at this at this area um and uh, obviously that would have to be a scheduled a public meeting for us, um, but we can we can definitely you know look at that, and j just to make sure that we have um, all the information we need to to make a decision that we all feel good about. Because I think I think the planning board in general, not speaking for all members, but in general, you know, has been supportive of sustainability of um, you know generating m more power from solar. Um, on the other hand, the the flip side of that is also a strong um, wish to preserve 
all kinds of natural views in our community. And here, the, those two things that we both support are coming into conflict a little bit. I don't think it's a serious conflict, but it is a conflict and that's one we want to proceed um, carefully with. So, um, um, so, so there's more information that we might have to, to, to gather on that. I also think Lakshmi's um, suggestion or, you know, a question if, um, if solar had been investigated on, on the, uh, on the building as a whole, which has a large, I don't, I don't know what the structures look like of that building of the building truth, but obviously this thing gets a lot of Southern sun um, and, and wondering if that would be a, a, a way to, to, to utilize that building as well. Um, yeah. So. I mean, just, just based on shading, really the only um, you have, you know, this, this Southern facing, uh, which, but is again, directly facing the, the street and then portions of, of, I would guess the, um, the Western uh, side of this, this larger mm -hmm. roof, but with, with the shading and everything in here, um, your, your production level would be, would be minimal. Um, sure. I have, I haven't seen a shading report specifically for that roof, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm guessing that's why um, it, it really wasn't explored. Um, right. The, the East and North sides are, are tough, obviously. Um, right. Are there any more um, are there any more questions from the planning board or from the public um, hanging out uh, there? There are, there are no hands raised for the public. Okay. Does anyone in the planning board have any other comments that they want to make at this time or suggestions about how we want to proceed as a next step with this project? I mean, uh, I, I I'm in a, I'm in full agreement that we would benefit from a from a site walk. Um, you know, we could we could do a retreat at the VFW, Tricia. <laughs> I was going to suggest the same. Yeah, have an open but, space. But it, but in all in all seriousness, I really appreciate the public comment because I, you know, we all come from this from a different perspective, right? So, um, I I was focused on the front view and I did not consider the river view. Um, so I do appreciate that blind spot being removed, so to speak. I think this is an important detail that we want to get right. Um, you know, as I'm listening to this, I I definitely lean towards solar. And, and I want to make sure that we encourage this project as much as possible. Um, and there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way that we can find um, a good balance, right? Um, so, and this is a strong board with Marcelo added on. Um, and I think we can figure this out. So I, I hope that, um, th you know, the applicant continues the conversation and I'm looking forward to being on the site. So I, I think in summary that we would be looking for um, uh, for the planning board and obviously a public meeting, the public would be welcome to take a, um, a walk through of the site. We are looking for the owners, um, the applicants um, uh, feedback on possible vegetation, you know, um, maybe not only in where the solar panels are, we didn't really discuss this, but also on the boxes that I think get close to that one resident. We would also be interested in the, if that is a rental property um, on the east side, um, to understand the, the actual owner of the property's viewpoint, you know, on that, because obviously a renter and an owner might have very different takes on it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I think, um, I, I'm, I'm also wondering when the hearing with the Conservation Commission is scheduled. Um, I, I believe it's the 24th. Okay. Of January. Okay. So and it, it would be interesting for even some of the questions we have, some of those really um, are in their purview and we would be wanting to, you know, understand what things look like from, from their point of view as well. Just uh, I have one small thing, wondering how occupied are those parking lots at the back? Because if we are worried about structure of six columns, but you have a series of cars parked at the back, your visual is automatically affected wherever you are at the kind of the river walk or whatever. So the open space concept to me seems to be fighting a little bit. I'm curious also about how many parking spots and that is really being occupied on a normal basis and if they have like kind of a gut reaction of saying hey all the parking spots are always occupied and then I feel like whether you have a structure or not I'm not sure whether that's really the offending part of this whole composition at the back 
And I don't, I don't know if Mr. Collins has an answer to that. In my experience, um, generally during normal business hours, that parking lot is fairly empty, but for events, it can get quite full. Um, that they do have uh, large, large events there. And, um, but, but that's just my own personal experience being there once in a while. So no, no real data. Yeah, I, I don't have any official data in terms of traffic counts or anything. You know, we, we didn't do a traffic analysis because it really doesn't impact traffic. Um, I can, again, just speak personal experience having been there to do the survey uh, on a weekend, I would say, um, there wasn't any events going on, but there were people certainly frequent, frequently the, um, the, the, you know, the private club back there, I would say there were probably about throughout the day, uh, 20 to 30 cars, give or take. Um, and that was a weekend. So I think my, this one reaction to that is if you're concerned on the other side from the river walk, the view back towards this building, and it's not an open space on a normal basis, you always see 20 cars parked having a column six by six column across the four poles i'm not sure how much it's going to affect visually because it's not an open space it is a parking lot there are about 20 cars there's quite a bit of number of cars parked to me on the eye level i guess my attention would be drawn more towards par cars versus a canopy i would think um so i I'd, I'd be curious if we are to planning as a board to go for a walk really check those aspects as well to really see that visual effect and if at all it's going to make a difference um yep fair point we're gonna we're going to wrap it up shortly though i do see that joel has has his hand raised so um that we can take one more comment before we maybe wrap it up for tonight okay i just wanted to respond to the idea that there are 20 to 30 cars parked out there on a frequent basis uh i think that would need to be verified I mean, uh, you know, the applicant can make any statement and that I, I take him at his word. It's probably his best assessment of the situation. But uh, in mine, it's very different. There's almost never anybody in that parking lot most of the time. So, you know, at, at a minimum, uh, if the board does do a site visit, you'd at least have that day to to make your own assessment if it's, you know, and uh, maybe uh, just taking a, a, a quick Two, two minute drive up and down Ponderosa Road a few times, looking across the river, you could make your own assessment and have the best available information rather than the subjective views of the applicant or myself. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be looking at all, all aspects of it. So um, just uh, asking and answering questions today and gathering information. So um, are there any further questions Comments from the planning board? All right, on that note then, um, can I have a motion? Oh, Peter, are you back? Yes, I am back. How are you doing, Tricia? So Hello. Um, can, um, when would we be looking to continue this too? So uh, obviously Nathan, um, I think we've, we're in agreement we need to continue this meeting tonight uh, to, to a further date. Uh, our next meeting is going to be, excuse me, on January 27th. However, if the planning board would like to schedule a site visit, I would uh, obviously, um, I obviously want to try to uh, make that happen um, sooner rather than later. Um, or if it's the planning board purview to um, a preference to, 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 to continue this out to the first meeting in February, which would allow greater time to uh, visit the site. Um, Another question I would just like to reach out to Nathan on is Nathan, would you be um, wanting to join us on a site visit or is that something uh, you, you would uh, pass on? I would be happy to join the, the planning board. Okay. And during something. the week, what's your schedule like? Not to put you on uh, the, the spot. No, that's fine. Um, the most challenging days are Tuesdays. Um, Wednesdays are generally pretty open, um, but you know I I can if if there's a certain date that works best for the the board, um, I can certainly accommodate. Whether it's myself or uh, you know certainly someone from Next Grid, uh, that can be you know part of the site walk. Yeah. Um, given 
the information we want to make sure we gather before that time and being able to schedule the site walk as well. Um, would you be opposed to scheduling this for our first meeting in February? Is that, um, would, would that be okay, Peter? Is that pushing it too far out? No, I think that's, that's that works for me. Nathan, are you, are, are you okay with that? I, I don't think that that has any issues, obviously, um, as part of the, the SMART program in Massachusetts, you have certain deadlines that you need to meet. Um, but I, I, I think we're okay um, with this project. So I don't, I don't think that would be a major issue to have a, an additional two weeks. Okay. I, I just need to, yeah, I would just like to make sure we, we have enough time to gather everything we need to make informed decisions. And, and that includes ideas on vegetation or c contacting a butters and things like that on, on your, your end as well. So. Okay. So um, I think we're in agreement uh, with Nathan, our applicant, that we can continue this out to our first meeting in February. Um, and within that time frame, uh, most likely, um, well, maybe as soon as tomorrow into a Monday, or Tuesday, excuse me, I know we have the, the holiday on Monday, um, myself um, and or Emma can be sending out an email to the planning board to try to schedule a site visit. Uh, and obviously, uh, Nathan will be included on that email to make sure that your your uh, your um, your your schedule is incorporated. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I um, can I have someone make a motion for that continuation? Sure, I can make a motion to continue the hearing, the public hearing on three eleven Pleasant Street Special Permit and Site Plan Review to Thursday, February tenth. I, I think Anna, we're going to just say the first week. Can we just say the first oh, meeting? In February first meeting in February. Okay. <laughs> given first our given our discussion that's yeah. happening later of, of meeting. Got it. In the first meeting yeah. in February. Of Thank the you. Board. I second. Yeah, I second that. All right. Uh, roll call vote starting with Lakshmi. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Deepa Venkat, aye. Anna Tesmaniski, aye. Robert Hona, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. That passes five zero zero. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, we are moving on to our next agenda item, which will be the 501 Pond Street before um, the 501 Pond Street public hearing before I have asked Lakshmi to um, to uh, read that application. Uh, I'm just making a note that for this public hearing, planning board member Anna Tesmaninsky has, um, is recused as she is a direct abutter for the property. So she will not be participating in this part of the public hearing as a planning board member. And, and Trisha, if I could, I'll, I'll just make a brief statement on that, that to, to, in order to honor that, I'm gonna step out of this hearing. Um, and if I do come back at this hearing or future hearings, I would only be coming back as a member of the public. Um, tonight, I will just leave and not participate live at all. Um, and then I'll be notified when it's time for me to come back to continue to participate in other matters. So I'm gonna thank um, the planning board for, um, for that smooth transition and I'm gonna leave now. Have a, have a good hearing. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. All right. Shall I, Trish? All right. So at, at this point, as as well for this point of the um, for this point of the meeting and for this public hearing, it is important to understand that our associate member Kevin McLean will be stepping into the fifth seat as a voting member of the planning board. So um, on that note, take it away, Lakshmi. The Ashland Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, Jan 13, twenty twenty two at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom video conference at, um, at, at, to hear the petition of Trask Gain 337 Turnpike Road Suite 201 South Borough Mass 01742 requesting a special permit design plan review and site plan review as per Chapter 40A Section 6 of the Massachusetts Zoning Act and Chapter 282 8.8 .8 points 
Con Street, mixed use overlay district, 9.3 special permits, 9.6 design plan review, and 9.4 site plan review of the Ashland bylaws. The applicant is proposing the development of 120 rental apartment units, 64 two bedrooms and 56 one bedroom with approximately 2,351 square feet of ground floor street facing retail space. The project provides a total of 160 parking spaces, nine spaces designated for retail use and 155 designated for residential tenants and guests. The project is proposed to be serviced by town water, sewer, and underground electric and gas. The property in question is located at 501 Pond Street, Assessor Map 29, Lot 151. The property is within the Highway Commerce Zoning District and the Pond Street Mixed Use Overlay Zoning District. Parties wishing to be heard on this matter should submit comments to the Planning Board ahead of time and or appear at the time and place indicated above. Materials can be viewed by appointment at town hall during normal business hours or visit our town website. For more information or to submit comments, please contact Peter Matcha. Sorry about that. Thank you, Lakshmi. Um, Peter, can you... Um, uh, introduce the next project and um, let us know who is going to be doing the presentation tonight. Sure, thank you so much. So uh, this next project is actually just stated is 501 Pond Street, which is being proposed by Trask Development um, tonight. Uh, as Lakshmi stated, this proposal includes 120 rental units. Uh, it is important to note that within the proposal 25 percent of the units would be counted would be at the 80 percent ami which would therefore mean all 120 units would count on the town's uh, shared house inventory uh, that's a note that we can kind of take deeper into during the application process however i think uh at this point it's uh it's we're at the point where the applicant mr matt and ben stevens uh, who are together on the screen tonight are the applicants. Um, the applicants are also represented by Mark Kohlblatt, who is their attorney, who will be speaking tonight. And then also, excuse me, Matt Marado from Icon Architects. Sorry, Matt, if I got your name wrong. Um, but at this point, uh, I believe it's the three, those are our three uh, members of the applicant team. So at this point, I will hand the, uh, I will not hand it over, but I will ask uh, Matt, Ben, and or Mark to step forward and to introduce the project to the planning board and also to the public. Thank you, Peter. Uh, for the record, I'm Matthew Stevens. This is Ben Stevens from Trask. And as uh, Peter had mentioned, we're joined by attorney Mark Cadlack and Matt Murata from Icon Architecture. If I can, I'm just going to share my screen so I can pull up a presentation. Is everyone able to see that? Yes. Okay. Yes, you're good. Perfect. All right. So as previously mentioned, while well, we're here tonight to discuss our proposal at 501 Pond Street, so it is a mixed use property. Um, we are the applicant trust element. To briefly go over the team we've assembled for this application, we, as previously mentioned, now twice the applicant trust development, our architect, is Icon Architecture. It's a Boston-based firm. I believe they've been in front of this board previously for other applications. Our civil engineer is Bruce Salick, uh, Bruce Salick and Associates out of Marlboro. Our landscape architect is Grady Consulting. I believe they're out of Kingston, Massachusetts. We have hired MDM Transportation Consultants as our traffic consultant for this pro uh, project. And um, our counsel, as mentioned, is Mark Cablack of Cablack and Associates out of Westboro. So to give a brief introduction to us, Trask, uh, we are a family owned real estate development firm. We are based out of Southboro. Um, we've been at it for about 30 years now and we work exclusively in Boston Metro West. Um, so just in Ashland and the surrounding towns. And uh, we're based out of Southboro, that's where our home office is. And we don't like to stray too far. We like to work um, in places where we live as well. We have two fairly notable projects we've done in Ashland previously. Um, 
probably most recognizable would be 21 Main Street, which is located right downtown. That was a 12 unit mixed use property. There was nine residential two bedroom units and three commercial spaces. Um, that's now home of the Bagel Table and Oak Realty Group. We also developed Ashland Woods on West Union Street right next to TJ's. This is a 60 unit uh, multifamily rental property. We completed this in 2016 um, and it was a fairly large development. So now moving into the application we're here to discuss with you tonight. Um, 501 Pond Street is located in the southernmost portion of Route 126. It is right on the Holliston line. And as Peter had mentioned, it is located fully in the Pond Street Mixed Use Overlay District. Um, we see this parcel um, given its connection to area, commercial space, um, and it being the sort of gateway property at the entrance of Ashland on the Holliston town line and the property that serves as the starting location for the ongoing um, Pond Street revitalization work as a, a gateway property, which hopefully a project like what we are proposing here um, could invigorate the site and hopefully add some vitality and, and economic viability to the core to the corridor. Um, as you can see on the on the plan in front of you, it's a very uh, walkable site. It's has immediate walkable access to area amenities, which not many other um, suburban multifamily residential properties have. There's walkable access to grocery stores, restaurants, gyms, um, childcare banks, and most notably walkable access to public transportation as well. Just another aerial view of our site. The site itself is about 4.1 acres or 180,000 square feet. Uh, in our initial conversations uh, about the project, we met with town staff and DPW to have discussions about accessibility of utilities and such on site. We have confirmed that we do have access to all needed utilities um, on site for this project. Also in conversations with DPW, um, we did come to realize that there was uh, some off-site work that was going to potentially be needed um, or requested the, to be done by us, the applicant, in connection with this project to increase uh, sewer connectivity in this portion of town. So we have agreed uh, to do that off-site work in connection with this project. And my understanding is that um, based on conversations we've had with DPW and then Haley and Ward, the town sewer consultant, is that the work we're going to be completing off-site would just increase the connectivity um, for sewer in this portion of town. The site itself is, is fairly easy to develop. It's essentially flat with the exception of some man-made hills which have been left over from material storage from the, the current owner of site. It's free of any wetlands. Um, we have a couple hundred feet of frontage on Pond, on Pond Street Route 126. And we are currently accessed by Converse Way. There is a curb cut on Converse Way, which is private. Um, and we are gonna be maintaining that curb cut as our, our main entrance to the property um, that we are proposing. So now to get into our actual proposal. Um, when we first looked into this site, we were really excited by all the efforts of the town and, and the push to revitalize this section of town through the ongoing mass stop project. So we're really excited about this proposal and we feel that it does have the, the potential to enhance the social and economic viability of this corridor as the entire Pond Street um, revitalization efforts have, have sought to do. So our project, as mentioned, it's 120 rental apartment units. It's a mixed use building. Um, and there is a 2,300 square foot ground floor commercial space in the building. And in addition to the commercial space and the 120 rental units, there's also 6,000 square feet of amenity space located on the first floor of the building for the residents. Our unit mix is exclusively one and two bedroom units. We have 56 one bedroom units, um, 64 two bedroom units. And based on our experience um, with buildings of this unit mix with units of these size, this tends to lean more towards an active adult or a young professional renter profile as opposed to a, a family renter, just given the smaller unit size and bedroom count. So we are 
tailoring our amenity package to meet that. We are going to be doing gyms and lounges and some nice landscaped areas as opposed to doing more of the resort style pool sort of highly amenitized package you may see with a building more geared towards um, towards larger groups of renters in one unit. Um, the building itself, it's the, of the 120 units, there is a 25% affordability component at 80% AMI, as um, Peter had outlined. Our understanding is that um, this would allow all 120 units of the building to be added to the sustainable, or the, excuse me, the subsidized housing inventory in Ashland. Um, and based on our, our knowledge, and, and Peter, you can correct us if we're wrong, but I believe that does represent a 2% increase um, in the total number of SHI units, which would allow for safe harbor from any future 40B developments for two years um, and bring the town to approximately 8% of the state required 10% for SHI numbers. Um, there's 163 on-site surface parking spaces. Uh, there is a breakdown later in the presentation as to the, uh, the number of parking spaces um, allotted for one bedroom units, the two bedroom units, and then the commercial space. Um, it is important to note that the 163 spaces we are providing does exceed the minimum requirements as outlined in the bylaw. I will, um, after Mark, our attorney has a chance to speak, I am going to turn it over to Matt from Icon Architecture to go into more fine details about the building itself, but I'll give a sort of a, a general overview of some of the, um, the more overarching themes of the building. Um, it's, uh, we are proposing that 100% of the units in the building uh, be serviced by exclusively electric. So none of the units will have gas service. They will be all electric. Um, in connection with that, we, at previous projects, um, most notably Ash and Woods, have installed solar arrays on our roofs and they've um, essentially offset all of the cost of our common area electric. And we are planning on doing that in this project as well. Um, also located on the roof will be all of the mechanical equipment from the building for the building. So all of the HAC condensers, elevator equipment, um, all that will be located on the roof, hidden from the street behind a parapet. Um, so they will not be visible from the street at all. The Pond Street mixed use overlay district bylaw does require that the building be energy star certified. Um, so the building will be energy star certified and the building itself, it's, it's four stories, it's 47 feet tall. And just to give some context, um, if you've driven by the site, the abutting um, residents at Valley Farm assisted living uh, facility that is 55 feet high. So it is slightly smaller than that building. And the Arborvitaes at the rear of our building are 35 feet high. Just to again add some more, more context to that. So this is an aerial view of our site and building plan and landscape plan on a what seems to be a fairly recent Google Earth image of, of this, this portion of the Pond Street corridor. Um, as visible in this, in this plan and, and visible to anybody who's driven down this section of Pond Street, this area with the exception of the residents of Valley Farm is primarily commercial right along Pond Street. Um, so we're hoping that with our application uh, being a 120 unit mixed use property with um, with a fairly large rental component that will have some uh, re a residential component that is is uh, needed and could enhance the social and economic viability of this section of Pond Street. Um, and as you can see from the, uh, the, the shot we have here, this portion of Pond Street is made up primarily of larger structures as opposed to some other sections of Pond Street where there are some other smaller, uh, more single family or small multifamily structures. And just to get a better view of our site plan itself, I'm going to move to a, um, a closer view of the site itself. Um, in conversations with some of our neighbors, um, we've gotten to learn a little bit about some of their concerns um, and have addressed that. We think in, in this new plan, we did get a chance to talk to um, the abutting neighbors directly behind us, both individually and then also at uh, one of the Ledgemere Country Condominium Association um, board meetings. We got to, to meet with them and discuss some concerns. 
Um, one concern that we've heard is uh, in the rear of the property, there is an existing run of arborvitaes, which I've mentioned previously, along the rear property line abutting Meeting House Path. My understanding is that those arborvitaes start um, at the entrance to the Ledgemere Country Condominium uh, project behind Shaw's and they carry behind all of the properties um, on this portion of Pond Street. We are proposing to keep those um, in the back of the property and protect them during construction. There's also a small portion of Meeting House Path, um, which is paved onto the subject parcel here, um, a sort of a connection of some sort. Um, our plan is to remove that asphalt that's currently on our property and then replace that with landscaping to continue the existing buffer landscaping that's in the back of the property to just, um, just lessen the view uh, for those neighbors there and create sort of a clear definition between the two properties. Um, we're not proposing any vehicular connection between Converse Way, which is private, and Meeting House Path. However, we do show a walking trail connection between the two developments in this plan. In conversations we've had um, with the neighbors behind us, um, there was some opposition to that. We are more than comfortable with removing that if that's something that the planning board is in agreement with, but um, we'll leave it there if it's something the planning board sees as, as a value add. Um, to this section of town. We've also uh, had a chance to talk to Jim, the owner of Putts and Moore in Holliston. Um, he's our abutter to the left. There is um, some access easements, uh, access easements, excuse me, which are going to be remaining in place. The main access to Putts and Moore right now is off of Converse Way, which is um, on our property. So those easements are going to stay in place. Um, and we've communicated to Jim that we're fully committed to work with him through our construction process to make sure that there's no interruptions to his business while we're doing the construction on site. Um, there's also a potential for us to do some betterments to the signage that Putz and Moore currently has um, on the front of their property on, on what is technically our property. Um, we are proposing a school bus stop there with some hardscape um, and would be more than happy to and enhance the signs that he has there as it's going to be in the same sort of general area as that. Uh, now moving to the front of the property on the next slide, I'll, I'll do a, a sort of a, a closer view of the very front of our developments. Um, we have designed the landscape in the front of the property to augment the ongoing uh, work that's taking place along Pond Street in connection with the revitalization work. So, as you can sort of see in this, on this slide, and we'll go to a, an even uh, closer look on the next slide, we have about a 25 foot strip of landscape in the very front of our project, um, in front of our parking lot, which is going to touch that new eight foot walkway, excuse me, pedestrian walkway that is being installed along Pond Street. Um, then there is the five foot, um, five foot landscape strip touching Pond Street and the sidewalk. Um, in front of our property as well. And my understanding is that um, the sidewalk is starting on our property. So this would be the entrance to the sidewalk on Pond Street in Ashland. Um, and it'll continue all of Pond Street up um, through Ashland to Framingham. I also, it's also my understanding that there's going to be trees planted in that five foot strip, um, approximately every 25 feet starting in front of our property as well. So in an attempt to help visualize that, um, on the left-hand side of your screen, we have just another a closer view of the front of our property, uh, just helping to illustrate that 25-foot strip of landscaping on our property designs to incorporate and enhance the existing uh, sidewalk or, and um, landscape strip along Pond Street. The pedestrian walkway is noted there. There is a black line on this slide here going through the pedestrian walkway. That's our property line. Uh, so not totally necessary, but just important to note. And then that five foot landscape strip is in front of um, that new pedestrian walkway. And to help visualize that further, on the right hand side of your screen, this is a rendering um, that I believe was prepared by this, uh, the Cecil Group in connection with some early discussions about the Pond Street uh, revitalization efforts. Um, it's on exactly the same scale, I believe, as, as what is um, actually been approved and being installed along the Pond Street, but it just 
is there to help demonstrate that there will be landscaping on our property and then an eight foot pedestrian walkway and another five foot strip of landscaping um, before the actual road onto Pond Street. So it'll be similar um, to this, not exactly the same, um, but similar and just we're trying to help illustrate what exactly was going on in front of the property there. So that was a very brief introduction to the sort of general items of our project. I'm now going to turn it over to attorney Mark Cablack to discuss um, items of the project in some further detail in, in the context of the overlay district as well. Thank you, Matthew. And um, good evening, board members. As Matt said, I am an attorney. My office is in Westboro. And this project, which is in the Pond Street Overlay District, had three main purposes when the town enacted the district. One was economic development to enhance residential activity and commercial use. Second was to make efficient use of existing infrastructure. And third was to provide access to employment opportunities and services. We think this parcel in particular, for all the reasons that Matt stated, is ideal for achieving all three of these. Uh, the, the, the property is a transitional property, if you will, to residential uh, development at the rear along Meeting House Path and existing commercial development along Pond Street. It will provide an integration, if you will, of residential facilities to be proposed here in this project with existing somewhat underutilized commercial activities in what we would commonly refer to as the Shaw's Plaza. In addition, this property currently is fallow, has been largely disturbed, and uh, I would say has been in need of some attention for some time, and the proposal will ideally uh, propose a good infill development, if you will, within the confines of the district and meeting the purposes of the district. Matt mentioned that the proposal includes 30 affordable units or 25% of the 120 of the units that are proposed. This is done again within the confines of the Pond Street uh, zoning bylaw and allows for an increase in density of units. The by right density in this district, given the size of the property, would be 90. And we are proposing a total of 120 to account for the 30 affordable units, allowing 25% of the entire project as affordable and allowing all of the units, as Matt mentioned, for the town to count toward the subsidized housing inventory. The slide before you gives a little bit of a breakdown again of what is being proposed. A total of 120 units, 30 of which will be affordable. The mix is one and two bedroom units. There will be commercial space on the first floor, which is again a, a goal of the overlay district. And we have adequate parking proposed. Matt, if you could just go to the next slide. This again shows the number of by right units at 90, which would require under the bylaw nine units set aside for affordable. And under the current proposal of 120 with 30 units affordable, we're, we're, we're giving the town and the state, which is in much need of housing, 21 additional units of affordability. If you turn also to that dimension slide, Matt, which shows required versus proposed, this shows the requirements for dimensional standards within the district and those that we are proposing. And as Matt mentioned in his presentation, uh, the building is compliant with respect to height. It's also compliant with respect to all of the other dimensional criteria of the district. So in conclusion, for my part of the presentation, uh, we think this site is ideal as infill development achieves the standards of the Pond Street overlay and allows for 
the integration of this particular project with other existing commercial facilities on Pond Street, and ideally will make good use of the mass DOT improvements along the right of way as well. Thank you. Now, Matt, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. If, if that... Thanks, Matt. Uh, thank you, members of the planning board. Uh, my name is Matt Murata. I'm with Icon Architecture and I'm associate principal there. Um, we are a 40 person woman owned business uh, based in Boston. Uh, we work all over New England, but primarily focus on Massachusetts. Matt, go ahead. Um, Matt did a great job already of giving you guys a, a great overview of where the site is located and what's around it. Um, just a quick look as planned here. Uh, the site is highlighted in yellow and red. Um, it's approximately uh, two to two and a quarter miles away from downtown um, and right adjacent to the Shaw's Plaza and the Holliston line. Next. Um, Matt has already kind of gone over what's abutting us here. I'll just make a couple more uh, points. Um, on the left-hand side, there's an image of that row of evergreens and arborvitaes um, that is that was referenced prior that we are planning on saving. Um, and it's relatively uh, tall. I think, Matt, you said it's 35 feet, plus there's a little bit of a berm there. We'll have a uh, perspective later on in the presentation, kind of illustrating uh, what that might look like uh, when the project is built out. Um, Spyglass Hill across Pond Street is up uh, above us, approximately 40 to 45 feet, uh, but also buffered by a, a good amount of uh, mature vegetation. Next. Uh, just a couple site context photos to familiarize yourselves with what's around the site. Matt mentioned the residences at Valley Farm, Putzmore adjacent to us on the Holliston line. Um, up the street further, there's also some uh, strip, single story strip malls, uh, restore, uh, restoration place, and uh, Shaw's Plaza. Next. Uh, site overview. Um, again, Matt did a great job of kind of giving you guys the, the, the tour. Um, we're adjacent to the uh, senior living facility and putt putt. Um, we do have two entrances off of Pond Street accessing into the project um, with a, uh, a parking, a band of parking around the perimeter of the building. Uh, we've come up with a kind of a C slash H shape uh, building here that fronts uh, its primary facade onto Pond Street um, with some uh, public terraces that are associated with the uh, commercial spaces and some open space and drop off in the front, uh, providing a further buffer. Next. For site access, uh, we do have our main entrance right at the front and center of our building um, with a uh, generous drop off area. Uh, the commercial space is uh, on the left hand side of the property, um, highlighted in the, the, the second left hand uh, large red and yellow star um, with a uh, bus shelter also access uh, proposed uh, at the main entrance along Converse Way. Um, and we are, as Matt mentioned, providing access to the uh, uh, Putts and Moore uh, site as well. In the back side of the site, we do have our uh, dumpsters for trash, um, some snow storage, and a uh, dog park. Next. Uh, for the larger green open spaces, um, you know, along the landscape buffer along Pond Street, we're, as Matt mentioned, um, continuing to uh, uh, bolster the screening and vegetation. Uh, we're maintaining uh, the mature landscape at the back of the site along Meeting House Path, um, as well as um, adding some more uh, trees and landscaping to our uh, neighbor the, at Putson Moor. Um, there is, we have proposed a landscape plaza that's associated with the commercial space outlined in the purple and highlighted in the yellow. Um, and then the two larger green areas there are our major green open spaces, one allocated for the front entrance of the building, um, and one is more of a private space that Matt mentioned is where we could have some courtyards and barbecues and grills. Next. Site landscape plan. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, um, but we are proposing 
uh, some site signage at the entrances at the entrance of the building along Converse Way, um, a mixture of, uh, of uh, uh, plantings, um, some uh, 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 flowering trees and uh, typical trees that you would see everywhere else. I think the, the important thing to understand is um, we are uh, lush, lushly vegetating around the building, uh, making sure that we don't have a ton of exposed uh, site. Next. Uh, our floor plates are pretty typical here. Uh, on the lower and the left hand side, you can see this is the ground floor plan. Um, the central part of the building is where we come in with our main entrance. All our lobby leasing and amenity spaces will be off of that space, which continues through to the back public uh, uh, private uh, courtyard space. Um, mixture of ones and twos, uh, as Matt mentioned. Um, the building stacks as it goes up next. But we do start to set back uh, along the front along Pond Street um, to provide some interest in this varied scale and elevation. Um, and then we are proposing to screen all the rooftop equipment, either with a slight pitched roof or a parapet or screen walls. Next. Uh, this is a view looking from Pond Street, looking uh, a little bit south, kind of towards the Holliston line. Um, you can see what we've done is uh, divided the building up into kind of three pieces, uh, two uh, ends with gables and dormers and bays. Um, with a central kind of flat roof uh, portion. The, um, we're articulating the facades, uh, as I mentioned, with the larger gables and uh, <clears throat> dormers um, and adding some balconies. Um, there's a mixture of uh, materials on the project. Uh, the end will kind of get in a little bit more detail, but it's a fiber spent lap siding brick um, and our windows are most likely gonna be vinyl. Next. Front elevation, uh, again, what we've tried to do is um, step the project from the four story massing at the back bar um, forward uh, towards, down towards Pond Street um, with these articulated facades and gable ends. Next. This is the view looking at the main entrance to the project. Um, on the left, you can see uh, the, the corner of the bus shelter um, in front of you uh, with a the, the commercial plaza and uh, lease, uh, sorry, the commercial space there with the optometry signage is the uh, front facing commercial space kind of anchoring the end of the project um, adjacent to the other commercial spaces, uh, the putt putt uh, golf. <clears throat> we do, uh, we are proposing to provide brick at the ground floor elevation at the commercial space, which will then also uh, continue on to the main bar of the building. Next. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the view looking from the Ledgemere condos. Um, the trees are, are modeled uh, appropriately at, at, for height. They're actually probably a little bit lower than they uh, in real than they are in reality. Um, we just want to give you guys a sense of what you would actually see from this side of the site, um, and since it is such lushly landscaped and densely landscaped with the mature evergreens. Um, at the most, we'll only be seeing the top floor of the ends of our wings of our building. Um, everything else will generally be blocked out. Next. Uh, I, here is uh, our proposed siding materials. Uh, we have a mixture of uh, like uh, lap siding, um, either seven or uh, seven inch exposure or four inch exposure. We might make a little, do a little bit of variation. Um, we're, we're sticking with some classic colors, with Arctic white, Booth Bay blue. Um, to highlight some of the uh, end gables, we're looking to do a board and batten type finish, um, as well as maintaining that board and batten for the attic story on the middle bar. Um, the middle bar will also have three stories of brick. Uh, we're proposing to do a gray uh, with uh, some color variation in it. Um, uh, as well as some asphalt shingle roofing, most likely a uh, darker to lighter gray. I think that should be it. Perfect. Well, that concludes our, our introduction to the project. We're more than happy to answer any questions um, that the board may have about uh, what's been presented in front of you today. Great, thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. Um, just to give the um, everyone listening 
uh, a little bit of um, an overview of what, what we're going to be talking about today. Obviously, this is a project that this is the first time we're seeing it. It's the first time it's been um, presented in front of the planning board. So it's just an introduction tonight. And um, what will be happening is um, that first I'm going to open it up uh, uh, to the planning board to ask any questions to the applicant team that they have about the project. Um, once those questions are, are asked and answered, and I encourage the planning board to keep it to more to questions versus comments at this time, just to, so we can really clarify the project. Um, once that's completed, I will be opening it up to public comment. We will keep, given the interest of time, um, we're gonna keep um, those public comments, establish some rules. It will be um, uh, two minutes per speaker and one time to the mic until everyone obviously has had a chance to speak. Everyone may not have a chance to speak tonight, but I, I do want to remind people that this is just the first time we'll be seeing this project and there'll be other opportunities um, for public um, input as well. So, um, so, so keep that in mind as we go forward. Um, Peter, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Did I have everything covered? I think you covered everything. Uh covered everything I was going to state. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of, a lot of statements and, and information that were just um, obviously uh, put in front of the planning board and also the public. But I, you know, um, I will say if there's anybody that has any deeper questions or would like to uh, a better understanding uh, of the project or a detail concerning the project, um, I'm always happy in, 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 if they don't get answered tonight and or they come up after the meeting. Um, I do work in town hall every day and, and, I, and I can be contacted by email and by phone. Um, and so I am available to help answer all questions and concerns that may come up. So um, as, as uh, Jerry stated, um, I, I think it's appropriate to open up uh, comment from the planning board at this time. Um, planning board members, um, if you have questions, um, please feel free to step forward. Residents, if you um, already feel like you, you want to um, speak, feel free to raise your hand. And then when we get to that portion of the project, we will start opening it up to, to public comment. So um, any members of the planning board? Tricia, I, I do have uh plenty of comment but I'll save them I'll save them for for the end as you suggested my only question would be uh, from the meeting that uh, that was held with the neighbors was there any agreement or anything uh, different than what we've heard from what the neighbors commented they were looking for that that um, that we should be aware of just to go back to that slide of the site plan. So I will say that the, the meetings that we've had with the neighbors, um, the largest meeting was with the board of trustees of that condo association. So it was not all of the members of the condo association, but just um, those that sit on that board. And the biggest um, concerns that I took away from that meeting with them was the connection that um, at first glance looked like a vehicular connection between Converse Way and Meeting House Path um, but with a little further investigation of the plans, um, it does show that there is a very clear separation between the two. Um, and I heard a lot of comments requesting um, just as much landscaping there as possible to sort of buffer that space and really separate the two projects. Um, and that's, that's kind of our goal with what we proposed here. Um, I did hear some concerns about overflow parking currently for putts and more. Um, on meeting house path of people cutting through. And um, I think that it's um, fair to say that we'd wanna help stop that anyway. And if that means not having a walking trail there and just being fully landscaped, then we're fully committed to that, but wanted to leave that decision um, to the planning board. Thank you. Um, um, any other members of the planning board who have a question? Yeah, so this is Lakshmi here. Um, what kind of traffic study was done 
the impact on traffic on that street because uh, because of all the other commercial uh, uh, properties that are next door. Um, there's usually a l large impact on traffic already there. So adding 129 units, uh, what impact is it? 120 units. What impact is it going to have traffic on that area? Um, if I could, we do have a, um, a full traffic study from MDM traffic associates. There were there are no alarming statistics uh, based upon the level of service that exists now on Pond Street and what is to be expected with the new um, work. However, probably I'm assuming there'll be a meeting associate sort of targeted towards um, circulation, traffic, and parking that uh, I'll probably reserve and let um, our traffic associates discuss that in more detail. But they have done an analysis uh, that you're looking for. So we will be able to provide that. Okay. And, um, and I also have just one or two questions before we, before we open it up. The first one is in regard to the commercial space, if we have 100 and 180,000 square foot building and we have just over 2,300 square feet in commercial space, when we're talking about the goals for the Pond Street Overlay District and, you know, as presented, um, you know, one of the big things in there, obviously, the first thing on the list is economic development, and it talks about commercial properties. So how, where did that decision come from that 2,300 square feet is enough for a project of this size, which is a gateway project, as it was described? How does that, where does that number, where did that number result from? Um, quite honestly, we spent we spent a lot of time analyzing the economics of this project, um, and given its location, it is not an ideal retail location. It is um, not going to get um, foot traffic. Um, there is no other associated re retail. So when we took a long, hard look at it, we didn't think um, any significant retail would be viable. We've had some experience in town. Um, obviously the construction costs these days are through the roof and the return rates on the commercial didn't, didn't make the building working economically because we didn't think there, whatever tenants we could get, we'd probably be just stealing them from a, um, class B uh, or an alternate location off the street. Um, we did have an associate of ours who runs a very successful, um, optical business in Milford. Um, and he expressed interest about expanding into the building. We kind of catered to him. His rent is literally 50% on the dollar relative to a, uh, to a residential rate. But um, he's, a, he's a great uh, business that will fit well in the operation because he's a, he's a nine to five business. He's not an evening business. Um, we're also somewhat restricted. There is a deed restriction on this property that we can't um, have any tenant that could uh, be associated with food or the selling of food. And Shaw's does have a review of, it, of um, any tenant we provide or want to try to get in the space. So we're, some of our tenant base is already uh, off the table, if you will. And that really, given our location and the analysis we did, uh, felt like our only user was maybe medical um, service or gym that we, we just didn't see the need for it. Um, we didn't see the desire for it. We didn't see the demand for it. Uh, so there was, to, to put it in the project, we'd probably kill the project as we saw it. Ben, when, were the, was there, dis uh, were there discussions with Beth Reynolds, the economic development director um, for Ashland about community needs? Um, not specifically on this project, no. Okay. I just wanted to mention one other thing. I think it's a legitimate question that the chair has asked. And in addition to the demographic information that Ben just went through, uh, what we thought um, in particular for this project and its location and the adjacency of the existing Shaw's Plaza, which we believe again is somewhat underutilized, the residents from this project will be within walking distance to that existing commercial development and will instill some vibrancy to that existing center, which is another goal of the Pond Street overlay, which was to make use of uh, existing infrastructure. 
So I think it's a legitimate question if this property was surrounded by other residential or industrial uses, but particularly here, given the proximity of the Shaw's Plaza, we thought we met that goal of connectivity and enhancement of commercial use. One more question on this one kind of goes completely opposite of the first one, and it's really directed maybe toward Matt Morota and the architects on the project. This obviously, as you spoke of, is kind of a gateway building. It's the first site into Ashland, and starting off this new 126th Street, which we all hope will be as wonderful as the drawings we've been looking at over the past many years. And I'm wondering where, I mean, this could be a very long discussion, and maybe you can just state it briefly, but were there certain aspects of the site that gave way to the C or A-shaped building footprint, or, you know, how does the building become a gateway project? You know, we start looking at basic things about your first lines on the page about a building development of this. What were your first marks? What started to guide this shape of this building, this placement of this building as the right one for this site in Ashland? Yeah, I think the first things we really noticed were along the Pond Street corridor. Currently, there's no buildings directly up against the edge of the property and street, which is why we do have such a large setback. And then, you know, we also were wanting to make sure that we kept the building footprint as condensed as possible along Pond Street, so we didn't have a long elevation. So, hence the legs coming out, making the C shape. I think, you know, the gateway aspect, trying to make sure we are really presenting the front elevation and not just a flat elevation, which is why we started stepping down the gate and making large gable ends, making some bigger gestures at the ends of the C shape towards Pond Street. Okay, great. Thank you. That's a hard thing to summarize in a few sentences, so thank you. Are there any other questions from the planning board before we open it up for public comment? My one quick clarification is which part of the building does it going to have the solar panels that you are looking at on day one? Because none of the renderings are showing any hints of solar panels anywhere. Sure. They're all going to be located on the roof. I'm just going to go to that roof plan real quick. They're not shown on this rendering, on this plan, but we'll have them installed on the roof so they won't be visible from the street, but they'll be installed anywhere on the roof where we can fit them. But they're not shown on the rendering because you won't see them from the street. Okay. Matt and Ben, I'm assuming you guys are looking at like a ballasted system that lays flat on the, relatively flat on the roof. So they're only really coming up off of the finished roof a foot and a foot and a half, and we're already providing enough screening to camouflage that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the planning board? I just have a quick one. Please, Kevin. When it comes to construction phase of this, I know a lot of the neighbors in this area are going through a long construction project right now. So could you just quickly touch on what impacts of the public you may have or be completely contained to the site or will you need trains that might sit out into a lane of traffic to get this thing up? I can speak to that. It's actually a fairly easy site to work because it is, it's been 100% disturbed. There are some fill piles that would have to be removed, but there's no, there's no underground parking. So it's not a deep excavation. The building sits about two feet higher than the street. So being a square level, non-forested lot right now, it's a fairly easy site to control. As part of the Pond Street overlay, they're already resetting the granite curb 
uh, entrances and we're matching those. Um, so we don't really have your typical erosion problems. Converse Way is built. Uh, it's a 40 foot ride, a 40 foot wide full road that nobody uses now. Um, so we can contain ourselves on the four acre site fairly easy. Um, using the existing curb cuts, I, I don't, honestly, I don't know the status of where we will be vis a vis. Um, the balance of the Pond Street overlay project um, seems to go on, seems to be going on for a while. So it might still be going on when we're there. Um, but we did confirm that everything they're doing and or not doing will not conflict with what we're doing, uh, including uh, meeting with DPW about some the water line actually already loops completely around the building at 12 inch main. Um, sewer line is there that we just, they're the ones who informed us about um, a failing pump station up at Ledgemere, I believe it is, that um, needs about a 50 foot um, deep connection um, so that the town can sort of solve some problems in this general area. We've investigated that. But as for on site, I don't anticipate a lot of uh, interruption. Um, and no one uses Converse Way other than um, Putts and Moore and ourselves. Thank you. And then just quickly, um, you know, maintaining that row of trees along Meeting House Path is going to be very important. Um, I drove by the site today. They're kind of built into a berm that looks like from the plans, the, the bottom of the berm basically sits at the edge of your parking lot. And then you have a, a storm scepter system to deal with the groundwater or to deal with the runoff um, from your roof and stuff in the parking lot. Um, which, which I think it's good that you're re-infiltrating and not putting a burden on the on the city's um, drainage system. But how deep is that cut there, and how will you go about protecting those trees when you're when you installing that? Um, I did have an arborist out there, and he said because of the nature of the trees being elevated, um, it, it basically gave them quite a bit of a surface root, and not, not as much deep root. And we have a relatively high water table. So he, his theory was that those roots are going to be relatively tight to the trees themselves. That's not a very, it is decent gravel on the project, uh, but a relatively high groundwater, which means your root systems aren't uh, too expansive at that point. So um, he felt confident that if the, the cuts were outside of the drip line of the tree and they weren't, uh, you weren't exposing large sections at a time, that especially that and arborvitae, which is a relatively hardy tree, um, planted at that elevation so it wouldn't be crowded or buried, um, would have very good success. And we're committed, if there is a problem, we're certainly committed to replacing anything um, that would have an issue, any trees that might have an issue. All right, thank you. Um, if there are no further questions from the planning board, I would ask, uh, I assume, Emma um, to uh, let us know who from the, the public is first in line to, um, to speak. And, and just a reminder to the, to the public um, that we're doing two minutes each and, and one time to the mic and, um, for tonight. And uh, then we'll continue, obviously, discussion um, on another day. So, Emma, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. I'll invite Mark DeSoni to unmute. Okay, and again, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, good evening. And I have seen Pond Street finally come alive for economic growth that is in the future with this project. And I am so happy that it is about time because we went through a charrette something like 10 something years ago, hoping and stuff like this come through. And this is when I started really getting involved in the economic sort of things that from the CESA group to Beth, to Beth Reynolds involved with both of those and um, understanding of what this is, the commercial use, the square footage commercial use. It's about time that it has that. And I got all the park in there and all the, um, the surroundings that, that you want to work on. This is a positive step finally that something could be there that could, could stay 
and make and take a little bit of a uh, off the personal house house contacts off the off the people and find again some sort of a, get away from the three percent business because this town is ninety seven percent residential. It's about time that this came through. So my comment basically is thank you, Trask, and your and your and your uh, and your associates and everybody that, that's involved. This is a great thing. This is why 126 is being worked on with the state to do this. And I've got to say that the landscaping is, is a issue, yes, but landscaping does not bring in economic people, workers, and who you aim in your your residential, your residence and the and the apartment dwellers involved, who you're aiming at is what this is about. And it's so good to know that this is this is in the works right now that's on the planning board. And I know that it's a first time site review, but this should stay on and, and work its way through. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Mark. You. Emma, who's up? Um, now I will invite Kelly Smith to unmute. Hi, uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I have a few, many questions and some comments, but I know my time is limited. Um, first, I just want to go on record and say that I'm a little surprised to hear the comments about speaking with the neighbors because I'm actually a direct abutter um, and quite possibly the unit that will be uh, most impacted by this. Um, I've owned my home for about two years and I have not been, no one has reached out to me and I believe, or my immediate neighbors, which is, you can see my unit in some of the buildings. So I just wanna that be known that it's concerning when developers say that they've spoken to neighbors, yet I'm right here and I have not been contacted at all. Um, addressing some of the comments on the landscaping, um, I appreciate first draft of the landscaping because obviously you put a little thought into it. Um, there was a mention that there's going to be a path which would essentially go into my front yard. Um, and I'm a little unclear of why why there would be a path to a community that's been here with 300 plus units um, that's a quite private community. So I'm not clear why there would be a path and um, I would prefer personally not to have a path um, since we're uh, an HOA owned community with some services that we, our dues are paid in um, like you know, tennis courts and we have a, a small park. Um, our HOA dues you know, contribute to those and having direct access to rental units um, who aren't contributing to the upkeep is a little concerning to me. Um, also with the privacy, the um, Arborvites, I, I saw the, the drawings and we talked about the um, height of those, which the height is quite high, although you could still see that the top floor clearly sees over them, um, probably into my window, which at this point, there's complete privacy where I am. I've owned my home, like I said, for about two years. And one reason I chose this particular location is because of the privacy. Um, I also moved to Ashland specifically because I wanted to raise a family, which I have a small daughter and I was really excited for the close knit community. And I'm just a little concerned um, about this project and um, what the outcome might be and the impact on our community here that's behind it. Thank you. Um, thanks, Kelly. Um, Emma, who is next in line? Uh, I'll invite uh, Joel Arbeitman to unmute. We go. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, the planning board stole a little bit of my thunder. I also want to just comment. I, I appreciate the board's limiting this, our time in speaking today. Uh, I, there's no way I can make all of my comments in any work that amount of time. So I will be brief uh, and respectful. Uh, I want to point out that uh, if you look at the two entrances and exits coming in and out of Market Basket, you tell me how many cars a day go in and out of there. I guess it would be in the thousands and thousands. It's a huge commercial center. 
And this little tiny residential thing they're building here has two entrances and exits, just like Market Basket. I think that's a terrible idea. We already have that, that uh, residential uh, housing unit right next door. We have another one into Shaw's Plaza. We have the Spyglass entrance and exit and a small commercial center. Enough. You know, this is a dangerous situation on a highway corridor that's being upgraded, hopefully for more commerce and more traffic. Uh, to have two entrances and exits out of this little tiny residential thing, uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Moving on, uh, all electric, I heard. I heard that the solar will serve the common areas, which I think is just great. I applaud the, the applicant for not using gas. It's a, an environmental nightmare and a, and a very definite health hazard. I'd like a, a question I would have to be answered at a later time is whether heat pumps uh, which are very environmentally friendly are going to be put in, or is this really electric heat, which would be staggeringly expensive? Uh, this is not what I think about when I hear about mixed use. My grandma and grandpa were owned a bakery in Brooklyn, New York, about 100 years ago, and they lived up over the bakery. That's mixed use. I don't know what the laws say or what the common parlance is, but this is, if you look at that building, it smacks of residential development. It is not mixed use. Yeah, there might be one little tiny commercial thing, but let's be honest about this. This is a residence. This is not going to meet the, uh, what do we call it, the overlay uh, uh, specifications, the values of the overlay. This is something Ms. Kendall brought up, which I couldn't agree with more. Uh, we talk about jobs. We talk about commerce. We talk in those terms, and the one one of the uh, applicants stated something like, "Well, people could upgrade the Shaw's Plaza." Well, maybe. I mean, maybe they drive down a market basket. You know, this is not the kind of transition on a major highway commercial zone that we need. We need like an office building. I know uh, Beth Reynolds told me at one time she was trying and wasn't able to. But I, I appreciated the effort trying to attract uh, uh, one of the major hospitals to bring in and put in medical offices along there. Th this is a joke. I mean, a, a, an optometrist getting a discount. And I, I would just ask one last question about this is how long is that going to last? Look what's happened to 128 Main Street. Have you been to the commercial part of that building recently? It doesn't exist. Have you gone over to the, uh, the village concept in, in Village of the Americas to take advantage of all the commercial part of that development? It doesn't exist. Okay, what's going to happen when it doesn't get rented or when it fails or it's so little commerce that there are no jobs and no commerce? So this whole thing is just an, is a total uh, residential uh, project. And I think it absolutely is totally inconsistent with the town's objective of the 126 redesign to develop and promote a commercial, economic, healthy climate for Ashland. This just is not going to achieve that. And I would, I, I would really look at making some very major changes to what's going on here. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thanks, Joel. Um, and I'll invite Catherine to unmute. Hello. Um, so I, I'm somewhat echoing Joel's, but I, I want to just step back and ask the planning board to make sure that you represent the voters when evaluating this. And I think, I think when we voted for the Pond Street, it, it was a potential to have a vastly more dynamic corridor. And if we simply wanted apartments buildings, which essentially this is, we, that's how we could have written the zoning. So I think, you know, people might have been picturing, you know, areas in Wellesley, there's little shops, restaurants, areas to congregate. Some people might have been offices and live work. Um, but I don't think anyone envisioned a byproduct of our zoning change to have a roadway lined with apartment buildings and it, and especially bring the density of a city without the amenities. Of the city. And I think, I think that's what I, I really, um, asking the planning board to have, have that lens of, of how the voters were thinking when you evaluate this project. I think the, um, trash development, I look at this as a friendly 40 B. So if, if we had, if we're looking for apartment buildings, I, I think they would be a great fit. I just, this does not meet, um, you know, in any stretch the Pond Street mixed use overlay making it a unique destination 
unless we want to count, you know, ubiquitous apartment buildings as unique, but we have Framingham that did that for us. So, so it doesn't, it doesn't meet that. Um, I know in their application, they talked about economic development was increased taxes, but that is not economic development. Taxes pay for services and we'll surely have increased costs for increased residents for those services. So, so I just, I really asked the planning board to step back and look at, at what the residents were asking. Um, you do not have to approve an application in front of you. I, I um, believe the attorney Kavlik misspoke when he's saying 90 units are by right. If you're under the Pond Street mixed use overlay, it's entirely special permit. So please evaluate um, things that the applicant brings to you do have to be investigated and look at the application holistically. Um, if, and a last thing I'll say is retail is not the only thing for commercial. So we know there's issues about retail being viable, but that doesn't mean there aren't other options. And we, we can't just fall back to that to accept the, the lowest common denominator. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. And I'll invite Chuck Lids to unmute. Oops, sorry, Chuck, I think you muted yourself. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, I am um, the vice chair of the uh, sustainability committee and I wanna say how pleased I am that this is gonna have solar and will be all electric. That's absolutely wonderful. Uh, two concerns. One is, are you going to have um, charging stations for electric cars? We're gonna see more and more of them and particularly for, for um, apartment buildings, that's very important because you know, I can charge my electric car in my garage, but you can't do that in an apartment building unless you plan build that in as a part of the plan. The other thing is I've been told this area was clear cut, not um, that it wasn't not forested. Is that true? Does anybody know? Uh, Chuck, uh, uh, town planner Peter Magic speaking here. Uh, I believe that is true. Uh, I've worked in the town for some for two and a half years now. Uh, the previous and or the owner of the property right now is uh, the Fafford Company. And it's to my knowledge that the Fafford Company has used this property um, for the last few decades in the area to dump gravel and or other uh, dirt and debris from other local projects and or projects within the regional area. Uh, so I do believe that all the trees and the green and foliage that you'd see on that site is just the growth that is coming up from uh, the green piles. While we're, while we're stopped, and I'll let you get back, uh, Chuck, to the question, but if, if Mr. Stevens wants to answer the question about the electric charging stations, and also a question was about ground source heat, heat pumps since we're talking about sustainability. I'm sure it was actually in mass presentation. We do have, I think seven or six. So we have six charging stations in front of the building right now. Um, and to answer, I think it was Joel's question. Yes, they're absolutely uh, heat pumps. Um, we actually built Ashland Woods with heat pumps. They were uh, very effective in apartment use um, because there is such a, with an energy star rated building, you don't need that gas demand, that heat demand uh, from gas. So we have no issues with um, uh, condensating hot water heaters and uh, heat pumps um, for those units. And we plan the same here. And this will even be at a higher level uh, of energy rating than National Woods, which was now six or seven years old. Thank you. Um, one other note, uh, there is a lot of, there might be a couple of trees. There was some, um, a lot of scrub has regrown. It's probably been, I think there might be some quick growing poplars in there that 10 to 12 inches, but for the most part, there's fill piles scattered throughout the lot. Chuck, did you have, um, did you want to continue your question? You're good? Okay.
Okay. All right. I'm, I'm muted myself. Emma, did, was there anyone else reading? Uh, I do not see anyone else with their hand raised, no. All right. Um, given that we are at almost 945, um, and that this discussion would be continuing, and unless the planning board has a comment, they, they would like to make sure they make this evening. Um, um, I would suggest that we um, continue the public hearing this evening, but I, I'll give that opportunity to the planning board before, before doing that officially. Any comments that you would like to, that would you would like to make tonight? Trisha, right. I, I have a number of comments, but uh, I could defer it to the next meeting if you if you think it's more appropriate. I, we're going to obviously be just asking a lot more questions and getting more information and discussing this project extensively. But if you feel that it would best to that the um, that the applicant knows this tonight in order to prepare better, maybe for next week, you should feel free to okay. speak. Okay, uh, I guess that's probably a good idea. I, I just uh, just taking it from the big picture to the to, to the details. Um, I, especially after listening to, to all the, 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 the public commentary, um, there's, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot to, to, to be happy about and a lot to be concerned about with this project. I think one of the things, uh, uh, the targeting this district, uh, to increase density is part of what the district was, um, intended for. So I, I, I understand how the, the uh, proponent is uh, taking advantage of that. Uh, my concerns for to, to be developed further on the next discussions uh, kind of jive a little bit with what uh, some of the of the people uh, that spoke said uh, relative to a, a true mixed use uh, project. Uh, beyond the just uh, the, 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 the lone small commercial space um, and understanding that this is kind of a unique place because it's right next to another residential building before the commercial space. So, so I, I understand a little bit of what the traffic constraints there are, but, but, but the, the face of the building, uh, facing Pond street, having just one lonely, uh, commercial space does not strike me, strikes me as uh, meeting the intent of, of the district. Uh, I think the the vitality, uh, should be part of what the first project does to, to this corridor, so it's something to be uh, to, to really be discussed carefully, uh, especially when uh, somebody said there's other potential uses that there's just not a, a, a food um, establishment or or other type of use. I don't know, maybe co-work with the people that, that that would live there or what what have you. It's something to be considered. I, I think putting units in the in the front of the building on the first floor is is not really a good place to start. Uh, and lastly, uh, I am concerned about the mixed un the, the unit mix being proposed uh, and the amount of uh, one bedroom units. And I would like to explore that with the implications on, on parking and traffic that, that that might might bring to the table. And just to, to add my own um, just brief comment, um, which is part of the design question that I had asked earlier, is, um, is that we're going to be taking a, a really a close look at the you know, the site design of this project. And one of the, some of the things I noticed were just, like I said, I'm not sure about um, its image as a gateway project for Ashland or something that's um, remarkable in that way. I'm not sure about the typologies being used or suggested um, as being representative of Ashland. And I'm not sure about, there's something going on in the background if someone can, I don't know, a radio or something. I'm not sure about the, um, it, the, the use of the open space, I mean, the, the large courtyard in back basically has no access to south light, which I find a little strange in that CH configuration. And these are just some of the things that I wonder about, um, you know, is this the right shape for this site, for this, um, uh, for this place in Ashland and, and for this building type? Um, so those are some questions I think that, um, that the uh, applicant should, um, should think about between now and um, and our next discussion on on this. So, if there if there are no further comments um, from the planning board, um, we will entertain a motion to continue this to. Would this be for I assume for January twenty seventh, Peter? Would that be correct? Sorry, I just wanted to unmute myself. 
um, number one, Trish Eads, this would be the 27th. And uh, uh, Ms. Attorney uh, Callblock, uh, you do have your hand up. Would you like to state something, please? Yes, I'd, I'd like to um, talk uh, with the board at this time uh, as to the content of the next hearing and the hearings after that, because we anticipated that we would focus on particular issues of concern. Traffic was mentioned. Uh, there might be stormwater or engineering issues that need to be discussed. And uh, we're amenable to that concept. And I thought as part of this discussion, we would identify the subject matter of the next hearing as well. I believe from my perspective, it, it's really looking at the um, intent um, of, and I think Marcella kind of hit this on the head, the intent of this overlay district and, um, and to make sure that this building is really embodying what that was all about, because it, it does seem to be not maybe, um, I don't know, something that needs to be evaluated a bit more closely. I don't think the the overlay district or the Cecil report um, kind of um, would have resulted in a building like this with this with this kind of mix of use or and in this kind of configuration. Um, so I, it, it seems to be more of a study in how to fit the units on the on the lot versus something that's really appropriate to this site. And that obviously is a much part of a much deeper conversation. But we felt it was very important to let um, the, the public um, have a voice tonight to get those comments out there too. And um, we'll obviously we'll be getting deeper into these discussions as we go forward. But I, I think that's the big thing to really look at the overlay district, the Cecil report, things that Ashland residents have voted for um, and to make sure this is fitting what the residents of Ashland are asking for in, in that district. So um, if there's no further comment, would someone like to make a motion to continue uh, the public hearing? Excuse me, Tricia, before we oh. do that, um, yep. with a continuance, I just wanted to make sure that yes. um, for the record, um, the Stevens, the applicant, and also attorney Carl Black are in agreement, uh, excuse me, in, in agreement that at this point, it's the, in the best interest of the applicant to continue the hearing until the next planning board meeting, which will be scheduled for January, uh, excuse me, uh, 27th. Um, and also with an agreement, I would also ask to have a email and or a letter uh, signed stating that uh, the applicant is in agreement for a continuance, um, just so I can file that with the town clerk's office, please. Good agreement. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Trisha. Uh, excuse me, Chair. Uh, now I uh, I would ask you to move ahead with your motion. Okay, I can make a motion. I would like to make a motion to move um, 501 Pond Street um, uh, to Jan 27th for further discussion. I'll second, second that. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote, starting with Lakshmi. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Deepa Vengatai. Marcella Hona, aye. And Kevin? Blaine, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. So 500, we will continue this until January 27th. Thank you to um, all the speakers um, and the applicant for, um, for coming for the planning board. And we will see you on the 27th. <clears throat>
right? Deepa <laughs> Lakshmi. I mean, we're just getting started here. <laughs> just got started here. Yeah. They're all rookies. They're all amateurs. <laughs> we can't go to bed yet. Come on. <laughs> And I, I do see that. Um, well, maybe it, maybe I just uh, stopped. There, there was someone with their hand raised. Um, do note that we will have more public comments on 501 Palm Street in the um, in the meetings to come. So um, don't be dissuaded. Come on again next time, and um, and there'll be more opportunity for public comment. All right. So we have. Peter's still out. Marcelo seems to be coming back on. I don't see Anna yet. Marcelo, are you actually on? Anna's joining us. I just okay. called her. Yes, sir, I, I am, Trisha. Okay. Just my, my, my internet was uh, a little bit. Yeah, no, no worries. I could see your name, but I couldn't see you, so I wasn't sure if you. Yeah, no, I had a problem with the signal. I was getting almost disconnected, so I wanted to make sure. Okay. And um, it sounds like Anna is getting back on. Mm -hmm. I could see her connecting. Hey everybody. Oh, there you are. Okay. So you're coming on at the bottom of my screen and then you reappeared someplace at the top of my screen. And it looks like Peter's back on as well. So we have a full house once again. Um, so, uh, Joe, you have your hand raised. Is, is there something? I, I do, Madam Chair. And I was looking at the time. I was wondering whether or not your committee has to do the same as uh, the select board. And, uh, request uh, extending your meeting past 10 o'clock. Oh, I don't know. We regularly go past 10 o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> we, we do too, um, but we have to take a vote. I wasn't sure if you had to do that or not. I do not know. What, we, don't uh, have any, we don't have any procedure like that. We've just done it. Okay. I just, I just don't want to have an open meeting law violation, to, you know, filter down and throughout. That's all. Yeah, no, thank you, Joe, for the heads up. I, we, the plenty board, we, we just always trucked on, but uh, okay, I, I don't know if that's an Ashland requirement. I've never, I've never come across that. So, okay, but, I know uh, I select board does that's that's the only reason why I asked. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry yeah, to right. interrupt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nope, no problem, Peter. Do we need to take a vote on it or should we just go keep going? I, I, I think we should, we can just keep going. Okay. Uh, if you would like to, to for, for insurance purposes, we could uh, take a motion, quick one, but uh, to continue on, but uh, I, I, I think we can, we don't have to. All right, let's, let's, let's just go on. Yeah. Um, so, okay, next item on our agenda is um, the discussion and appointment of design review committee candidate Hannah Stein, who is with us tonight. Um, I have also invited members of the design review committee to tune in if they if they can. So I believe um, a few of them are here. Kathy Rooney is here. Bill Novakowski is here. Um, if there's anyone else is here and I'm missing you, let me know. Um, so uh, Hannah is applying for the associate, one of the associate seats for the design review committee. So that is the the seat where we will discuss um, for her tonight. Aunt Hannah, if you want to, could you just um, take two minutes and give us a little bit about your background? Sure. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So basically uh, my background was um, over 20 years working with different architectural firms in Boston, including Ad Inc, uh, Charles Bertman, Securis and Casandino, and uh, Morris Architects uh, in a marketing role, but also involved very strategically in creating and presenting presentations for major architectural projects. I then, when I left there, started my own graphic design business working with 
similar industry, architects, constructors, and engineers, uh, doing a variety of projects for them, including corporate identity, signage, brochures, direct mail, uh, pretty much whatever anyone needed. And um, I eventually phased out of that after 15 years when I had my two children uh, in quick succession <laughs> and spent several years being a mom. And uh, then when I came back into working um, again, I kind of had, you know, things had changed. So I kind of had to reestablish myself. And so now I um, own Ashland Reiki and Wellness Center. I am a Reiki master, and I also have a gift shop at 54 Front Street in the Masons building, which we've been there now for six years. So um, it's going pretty well, and we're getting to know many people in town. And based on my background and what I'm doing now, I was uh, motivated to want to offer something to the town, uh, originally in a full position, but since I just have had some staffing issues, I did speak with Trisha about um, coming on in the associate position at this time and uh, and seeing where that leads. So I'm very excited about doing that and hopefully that happens. Thank you, Hannah. I'd, I'd like to open it up to, from two questions from um, either the planning board or the members of the design review committee who are, who are also here tonight. Um, anyone can, can feel free to, to ask a question um, and I will just open up the floor. No. Oh, Kathy has a question. Well, I don't have a question. I have a comment. Um, okay. I went down and met with Hannah a couple of days ago and um, we had a great conversation. I think she'd be an excellent fit for us. I'm excited that she's a graphic designer and she's got the experience doing the other architectural um, work. So I think that'll be a, it'll, it'll be very helpful for our committee. Thanks. I enjoyed our meeting as well. Great. I, I would ask Hannah, uh, hi, my name is Marcelo Arjona. I, I wonder if some sometime in the past we, we crossed paths. Somehow I, I, I did work at that ink also many, many, many years ago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, I, I just wonder uh, to just to know a little bit more about you, since you have the experience of working with architects and knowing what what to look at and, and, and what have you. What what is the the uh, do, do you do you have any uh, expectation on how you would view design reviews for Ashland or what what would be important from now that you know the town? What what would you be looking for to ensure that we get the best designs that that we can get? Okay. Um, well, there's a lot of different things I could say. <laughs> I've lived in Ashland for 23 years. So I do have a sense of what the town is like now and what the town would like to be. Um, I do think that we have to be very careful as we approve and, and give input into new projects that we are meeting the goals of the town and not uh, overwhelming our resources, um, not leaving people unhappy who have lived here for a long time, who are, you know, citizens of good standing in our community, who've raised families here and all of that. And of course, the other side of that coin is, you know, progress does go on and, you know, we can't just be static. So there's, there's just a, a big, you know, weighing of the different needs and desires and what's going to work um, in terms of um, what I could offer in terms of, you know, viewing the projects. I think I have a view from the perspective of having worked with architects for many years and been in many discussions and proposal development. Uh, you know, I've been involved in many meetings such as what took place tonight, but in earlier stages as projects were being uh, conceived and you know, what's going to work and why is it going to work or why isn't it going to work? But as well, just, um, you know, what really would work in the community? What does the community want? And and in, I'm not familiar right now with the specifics of the uh, 126 overlay, so I have to do a little homework there. But, but clearly, 
there are desires for our uh, town and its development, and I would like very much to offer whatever I can to you know see that be fulfilled. So I can read plans. I do understand um, what's involved there. I also have a graphics background, so when I you know, think about how do we want things to look visually as you drive down the street. You know, that's something that I've been working in for many years. So, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions for Hannah? Wow, tough crowd tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have just one more question, and I may be misremembering this from your from your application. But did you also take courses in architecture or landscape architecture, or yes, I did. I took courses in architecture and interior design at the okay. Boston Architectural Center. Yeah. Okay, I thought I, I thought I remember that was that in um, the start of a pursuit of a goal, of a degree, but then took another turn or. Interestingly enough, I was planning to get a degree in interior design, and then um, as I got studying interior design, I switched over to textile design. So I actually got a degree at BU in textile design. Oh, okay. Great, yeah. great. Yeah. All right. Are there, are there any other questions? All right. Seeing none, I will entertain, well, I will entertain a motion to accept Hannah Stein's application for an associate member of the Design Review Committee? Trish, I am happy to make that motion. I'll make a motion to accept um, the application of Hannah Stein to the Design Review Committee as an associate member. I second that. And, and a roll call vote. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Deepa Venkata, aye. Hannah Tesmanitsky, aye. Marcelo Hona, aye. And Trisha Kendall, I welcome Hannah Stein to the Design Review Committee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will let um, Kathy and Bill take care of you from here. I'm sure they will okay. be in touch. All right. And thank you, Trisha, for all of your support. Well, thank you very much. We're happy to have your application and happy to have you on board. Great. And um, she, Hannah, you have to go get sworn in by the town clerk, I think. Oh, I do? Okay. So I have to make an appointment for that, I take it. Yeah. Uh, yes, and Hannah, welcome. So uh, welcome. Uh, I've been <laughs> in your store as well. Uh, oh, but but yes, uh, I'll be in, I can be in contact with you in, in the coming days, myself and or Emma, to explain the next steps. How is that? Great. So, Thank you, welcome. So. Thank you, everyone. I visited yesterday, but I missed you. So uh, we will continue okay. on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good night. And good night. So what we have remaining on our on our agenda, people, are some committee assignments, a schedule review, and meeting minutes. Just um, letting people know out there if they're excited about such things, please feel free to keep tuning in. If not, <coughs> don't be offended if you leave. Um, so next on our agenda is um, assignment of a dis sustainability committee representative. This is something that's been going on a few months. The sustainability committee would love a representative from the planning board to sit in on their meetings and to help them progress to, um, toward their net zero goals. Um, this is, um, and I see Chuck is still on from the sustainability committee. Um, so I, I think we had, we had discussed that fairly extensively, well, I guess what needed to be discussed. If anyone has any questions about it, Chuck is here, I think in available. Um, if anyone has an interest, I think they should just um, say they have an interest. <laughs> so if, could I get a clarification, Chuck? Um, it's my understanding that what you guys are looking for, you're not looking for someone to attend every single meeting of the Sustainability Committee. You're seeking a liaison, not a full-scale appointed representative, but rather a liaison from the planning board who will kind of advise and brainstorm with you specifically on the net zero um, resolution that was passed a town meeting so the person would not be attending every meeting of the sustainability committee but would rather work intensely with you for a few months um, so that 
at the spring meeting, you would be presenting kind of like little kind of goals and ideas to the people of Ashland as to how to make the sustainability resolution an action plan. So is that accurate? So it's not really I, participating in your meetings, but kind of focusing on that. I can imagine that there will be times when we will want to, um, to ask you to come to the meeting to discuss things. Uh, and I can imagine that could go on for another decade. Uh, I probably won't be there then, but you know, um, the, um, so yes, we want, we, we need to, we are trying to think through a general plan for how we would get to net zero by 2040. And once you start trying to do that, it's very tough. And we certainly can't do it without your committee uh, being very active in it. I think we will be in, we will probably appoint somebody from our committee to be a liaison. So, you know, you don't have to talk to the whole committee all the time, uh, but you can talk to one of us. Um, but yes, I think you ca captured it. We need to think through how we're going to do this. And we're going to need your help with uh, plans and so forth um, over a period of time. I don't think we can do this without you. Uh, you are after all about the planning. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that, that answers my question. And, and what I'll say is, you know, I'm, I'm definitely interested. I, I think that if others on the planning board are also interested, I'm happy to, you know, I, I don't want to get in the way of someone who someone else who might be interested. But I'll say that I, I'm definitely interested in, in doing that with the understanding, you know, specifically that although you definitely want to work with the planning board for years to come, um, the initial effort, if you will, that I'm committing to is, you know, that intense kind of brainstorming to take to take you to the town meeting with some ideas. And after that, I think that, um, you know, I would have to kind of consider capacity if this planning board takes on a comprehensive plan type of process. Um, I, I certainly I'm not prepared to commit uh, beyond that initial hard effort to get you guys to town meeting again. And I think after that, we would assess capacity, my capacity based on what we're doing with a comprehensive plan. So as long as others on the board are comfortable with that, I am more than happy to step up at this time. And in fact, I think if the planning board is gonna have a multi-year role with sustainability issues, we may wanna make the liaison a revolving kind of role so that others on the planning board can also be hearing about sustainability issues and providing another perspective. It doesn't sound like a formal appointment. It sounds more like a brainstorming appointment. Um, and I think the more the merrier. So I'm kind of throwing my head in the ring as long as others on the committee are comfortable with that and are interested in that kind of more informal partnership. Um, why, don't, why don't we call it a six month appointment um, to the schedule of which will be worked out between you and the sustainability committee, obviously, depending on availability and capacity. Um, sure. Because uh, it is kind of a, a new role. Um, if everyone is comfortable with that, did anyone else have an interest in jumping in for that position? Patricia, I, I, I appreciate that Anna is, is, um, is um, uh, volunteering to, to take, to, to, to make the, the immediate uh, connection with the with, with, with that uh, committee, uh, I, I I think I, I I could help with with some of the of of the discussions uh, based on my experience. I I definitely I cannot because of other commitments. And as I get um, you know started with with the planning board, commit to, to doing that. But if Anna's going to do it, I'll, I'll be happy to to try to stay in touch and and try to um, add to the conversation as as I can. I think the sustainability always welcomes. Uh, other oh, guests. Always. Always. <laughs> so I mean, maybe, I, Anna, yeah. maybe I, I Anna think that's, be in touch with Marcelo when those opportunities arise. Yeah. I think that's great. And I'm I'm happy to be co-appointed um, mm -hmm. if that has, you know, that can have benefits as well. So that if I'm not available, Marcelo is available. So I can, if the rest of the planning board is okay with that, 
we could make it that way. So it's me and Marcelo agreeing to kind of co co lead that liaison relationship. I could commit to the six months being the primary liaison and Marcelo could step in if I'm not available. Um, and of course he could always speak with them as well. We all could. <laughs> I, think, um, I think to make, I think to keep things simple, let's just nominate one, but knowing sure. that Marcelo has your back, if, um, Sounds if, good. If That's you're right. okay. That being said, I will, I don't know if we have to do this formally. I think maybe we do, but I will nominate, um, Anna Tesmaninsky to be the liaison, the six month liaison to the sustainability committee. Can I have a second? I can second that. All right, we'll have a roll call vote. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Deepa Langit, aye. Anna Tesmanitsky, aye. Marcelo Rona, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. So can I even vote for myself? <laughs> you, I don't know. <laughs> Chuck, you, you just Anna. did, Anna. Thank it's, you. Confusing, it's such a confusing hearing for me today. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Chuck, there's a not. lot of excitement to be on your committee. <laughs> she just voted herself in. Thank you. We're, we're very grateful, really. I, I think um, we're going we're gonna to work on it for a while, and then <laughs> we'll let her off. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We're going we're gonna to move on because it is going to be getting late. Okay. Oh, I will okay. leave. Thank you, Chuck. I, I, see a, I see a hand up from Sarah. I don't know if that's an accidental hand yes. up. Yes. Yes. I'm calling. To, I finally got back on. The oh, Zoom Sarah Hines. It's that Sarah. Hi, Sarah. That Sarah. Right. <laughs> the Zoom meeting froze up on me a couple of times, crashed me out. I had to try to get back on. Then it wouldn't even go to the Ashland Mass website because you had to go back and get the numbers. So for, I've for only those... now just gotten back on. I had to finally reboot my entire router. I, am... I don't know if there's something wrong with the Zoom thing. I don't have I am... any problems otherwise. Yeah, I am sorry. For those of you who don't know Sarah Hines, she is a local architect who was also one of the founders and designers of the Design Review Committee um, and was a participant in that until just a few years ago, I want to say. A year ago, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and also on the Pond Street uh, working group too. Yes. So, so. I, mean, I had I had taken notes. I had a lot to say, but I obviously I didn't get to. And I can't even <laughs> un, I can't even put my picture on when you put when I put the thing over there. It says rename yourself. When I, when I kind of hover over the camera, it goes to rename yourself. So I don't know what's with this, but can we? have a meeting is there no meetings ever in in person anymore i mean i not, obviously i can't participate because of this zoom yeah not not really i'm afraid right now we're all zoom <laughs> there's I mean, some really critical stuff about this project that the, the uh but hey too late the yeah, well, is gone it's over you know the moment has passed well there's going to be another moment coming up on the 27th so well, um, I, I did yeah, so please. Um, I've done other Zoom meetings, but this one was from just not working, not working. I don't know who, if anybody else got had the same thing happen, but I, I think, the person that was talking suddenly, it just froze. I think that so, does happen, and you just need to try to get back on again. Again so, and again and again, and then it wouldn't yeah. even go to the website. So it's like I, I just made nuts by it. So I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, well, there's a lot to be said about this project. That want not to. Yeah, and I'm sorry, we can't go there right now, Sarah. I know, I know. Still, I think I'm just I'm. But, I'm the, but if you can touch base with Peter or myself, we'll try to make sure you can get hepped up in easier next time. Yes, Sarah, I'm I'm happy. I, I I still work in Ashland, and I and uh, and I've seen you in a long time. But I am happy to help you with your technical issues, and uh, and, and also if you want to. Uh, grab a cup of coffee. Uh, I'm happy to, uh, happy to do that as well. In person. <laughs> In person. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, so that said, I'm sorry. We, we're, I'm going to have to push things forward. Um, we're next looking to uh, the CPC, the Community Preservation Committee. Um, this is the committee that Joe was on, um, and they are anxiously waiting for a representative it is in this in this case it is in the bylaws that the cpc has a representative from the um from the planning board they meet uh once a month and um and joe had given his uh 
explanation and actually we have the CPC here to talk about that as well. Did anyone, um, was anyone interested, and I guess I'm particularly looking at Lakshmi and Deepa, were your schedules allowing you to step in on that? Um, I'll throw out there that if you, if you two are unable to, um, Peter, I don't know what the regulation is about have, having Kevin step in as an associate member, because that's a, such a new thing, having an associate member. No, Kevin is, you know, Kevin's all in, you know, I, I think Kevin is a member of the board and, and if he wants to uh, throw his, throw in, throw his hat in the ring to CPA, he, he's more than welcome to do that. Uh, but, uh, but, but I will end at that. Um, I just didn't want to throw anyone into too much too soon. Planning board can be a lot in just in itself. Um, but let me know if you don't feel that way. Otherwise, I was looking to first to, to Deepa and Lakshmi to see if you had capacity for it. If you don't, I, I will step in myself, but I wanted to give you guys the opportunity first. Yeah, currently I don't have capacity, Trish. Okay. Me too. My Even if I had, my first interest would have been sustainability, but um, I think I would pass it for now. All right. Um, if either Marcelo or Kevin is anxious to join a committee, I'm happy to to entertain that. Otherwise, I, I can jump in for now. We can always. I mean, um, I'll, I'll, I'll say like I'm I am happy to step back from sustainability if that is, is if Deepa is, is interested and held back. So, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm in no way preventing others from stepping into something that excites them. So I just want to make sure that's clear. No, I know. Sustainability is all yours for the next few okay. months. Don't worry about it. Right. <laughs> you are not stepping on anybody's. Yeah. Go right. enjoy, have fun. I yeah. think she was saying that she was kind of booked, but if she wasn't, she would have stepped okay. up for sustainability. All right. And in that case, seeing, yeah. seeing no one fun. jumping in, can I nominate? I will nominate myself for to be the Community Preservation Committee representative until such a time as I get frustrated and demand that someone else take it or um, or someone says that they would like to take it, but it's supposed to be fun and you get to give away money, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I second that, I second that nomination. Thank you, Lakshmi. All right, roll call vote. Lakshmi Kushan, aye. Deepa Venga, aye. Anna Tesmanitsky, aye. Marcel Lohona, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. Woohoo, I am elected. <laughs> All right, so moving on the things we just need to figure out. Um, the retreat date can come second. Um, we're really looking for Wednesday evenings from 5.30 to 7.30. Those we do meet in person, um, those are the best nights for Peter, um, who has a ways to, to travel, not, not being a resident himself. I have to rub that in. Um, so I think though I think that can be set later. The big question I think is the uh, February meeting date. We've noticed that our second meeting falls during school vacation week, which means that I I think I am not here. I don't remember. Um, I think I am not here. Um, and I say I think because it's an invitation to go to someone's. Uh, ski house with the family and um they aren't sure about about the dates so um and i believe someone else said that they are potentially peter is not here yeah we, um, uh, i put we have my we i have plans to travel that uh that week yeah for school the ten, trish it's the 10th no so, it's the week of the 24th oh okay yeah, yeah, it's uh, the 21st is President's Day, so it's the week of the 21st to the 25th is going to be school vacation week. Mm -hmm. uh, our first meeting, um, well, our our first in our first meeting is going to be on the 10th, uh, and then our second meeting will be on the 24th. And so I think our optimal goal would be to shift those meetings. Uh, number one, moving the meeting from the 10th. The, excuse me, um, the 10th to the 3rd, and or we could also meet on the, um, excuse me, um, the 17th, and then in March on the 3rd. Um, 
I do want to make note there's five Thursdays in March. So prospectively, we could have five, three meetings in March. And then our, in April, we could go back to our second and fourth rotating schedule. Yeah, I, I wonder if the I wonder if the best course is to just keep it. I don't think we want to make it the third because then we're meeting two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. it's just, just too much. I think we could make it the 10th or the 17th. And then maybe we just take a week off. And like you said, we have three meetings in March every other week. So it's not, you know, we just take our little vacation more in February than we do it in, instead of in March. Would that be? Um, that would be that would be my preference as well. Yeah, keep that would be my preference keep too. The temp, keep the tenth as is. Don't move it, and the, move the twenty fourth to the third. So we have three meetings in March. Right. So so in March we would have the third, the seventeenth, and the thirty first mm -hmm. in March. Right. So the first, the third, and the fifth, which is kind of different. But then in April we'd go back to our regular two and four. Right. And I just want to make note, the 17th of March is St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yes, so, may, may, I, may, I ask, may I ask if we can just retain the current planning board meetings on the 10th and 24th and just have two meetings in a row, 3rd, 10th, and 24th? Is that um, not an option? Are you saying February or March there? March. 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 So March we would be doing... Oh, 3rd, 10th, and 24th. I think in that case, we should, I, I don't think we should do two meetings in a row. Those get really exhausting. So I would be more in favor of let's meet on the 10th. Let's just, we can wait and see on the 24th. If if I'm still here and only Peter is missing, you know, maybe, maybe Emma could fill in. I don't know. I, I have, oh, yes, I think Emma could fill in. Um, okay. Yes. Why don't, if it's, I would propose that we keep our schedule as is 10, 24, and then in March, it would be again, weirdly, 10, 24. 10, um, and if it happens that, I mean, even, even if I'm out, Kevin can fill in, right? Someone would have to fill in his chair, um, but um, it may work out fine, mm -hmm. right? So. I don't know if I'm just being too much info, but I'm just looking at the calendar. We could also do this is have the meeting on um, shift the 10th, or we could keep the move the 10th to the 17th. And then we could also have a meeting in um, March on the 3rd and then the 24th. So we would continue to have, um, we would just have two weeks in between our meetings. So we meet on the 27th of January, the 17th, which would be three week, two full weeks in between our meetings. Mm -hmm. And then again, we meet on the third, two full weeks, and then one on the 24th of March. Was that something you could not do, Anna, if we went 17, 3, 17, 31? That's fine. Trisha, is that, is that March? What you just said? It would be February 17, March 3rd, March 17th. No, March 24th. Oh. March 24th. So only two meetings in March? Two meetings in March. Okay. I could do either one. I could do three in March or. It's up. I don't think I can. I'll be in Florida that week. Which I can week? always. I'm going to be in Florida the week of the 24th in February. That's where I'm yeah. going. Um, yeah. I would, I would, I would like not to join in. Uh, yep. But you know, if I have to join in with palm trees in the background, I will. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, last minute, I will. I'm just that type of person. All right. Well, why don't we say? Why don't we move the February meeting to February 17th? So we're going to have a gap anyway. I don't think we need to. We could keep it on the tenth, but then let's keep it on the tenth. All right, let's keep it on the tenth, and then so we'll, our next so our February meetings will be February tenth, 
And then in March. The third and the 24th. So effectively, we've gotten rid of a public meeting entirely and have not moved it anywhere, just so we're clear. That's well, that's, clear. well, that's why I'm wondering, Peter, if why in March we don't do 31731. Correct. Okay. And that would be my that would be my comfort level. I, I I think we do need to keep a certain number of public meetings every year, and I think we need to find that we need to find a replacement for that meeting. Okay. Does I'm everyone agree with that? Third, I'm happy to meet uh, on uh, the third, the seventeenth, and the twenty, and the thirty-first. Okay. And any other problems with that out there? The third, seventeenth, and which date? For March now? First. Three, yeah, three seventeen thirty one will will give us the day that we're not meeting in February. Sounds good. So, so February, at the seventeenth, they said was a holiday. Was not? Is that not true? It's St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. Oh. So if you're one to go out party on St. Patrick's Day, it doesn't affect me really. So. Okay. Um, okay. So, so our meeting schedule from now until the end of March is January 27th, February 10th, March 3rd, March 17th, and March 31st. Good. All right, done deal. Um, why do, we don't we... vote, do we need to vote on that or that's like a good to go? I don't think we need to vote on it, do we? Great, good. No, I think we're all set. Cool. Okay. Um, that said, I, why don't I send out then some potential, so we don't spend time here, I'll send out some potential dates for that Wednesday evening retreat and we'll see what works out. Um, okay, I'll send out dates for that. That's something we can do online. Um, then the last thing on our agenda is the review of the meeting minutes. Um, Peter, do you have those ready to come up? Yes. Kathy, do you want to come on with a quick question while we're? Yeah. Um, Keep so it I quick because we got meeting minutes. I know. Since you've now you've worked out your schedule with the dates, I wanted to know if uh, one of those meetings could be with design review to um, have a discussion and we could try to do it now. Um, we could try to figure out what you what you all think one that date might be. Um, I would say it's. I would assume. Well, I hate to push it off. I would say maybe March third, but it could be sooner. Why don't we look at the upcoming projects first and figure out a time because we do want to have that joint like. You know, right. if it's an hour during a meeting or something like that. That's um, what I was thinking. Maybe we just do an hour. Uh, maybe to start with, because there's a couple of projects that seem like they're coming up. Maybe we do an hour on the 10th and maybe an hour on one of the March meetings to try to yeah. like up stuff. Yeah, that's, um, I'm going to play it by ear a little bit till we see what's coming up, but uh, we'll keep that in. We'll make sure that's on one of those agenda items. So, okay. Well, I'm trying to plan so my committee can do some work and be ready. I understand, but I'm going to want to talk to Peter about what he sees coming up on our agenda so I know what it, when it fits the design review committee agenda. Okay. So, because if we have if we have three public hearings on one night, we can't reserve an hour for design review committee. So right. that's that that's what the problem. So, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Good you. Day, everybody. Happy. All right. Um, so for this portion of it, I mean. Does anyone have any administrative things that we need to announce right away? Because basically I'm going to let Marcelo and Kevin go because they don't approve meeting minutes because they weren't there and they don't know that they're accurate. <laughs> do we want to, or do we have any, usually we do board member and town planner reports. Do we want to do that before? I, yeah, I thought, why don't we move up if there's any administrative matters, reports that anyone has, why don't we do that first? And then we'll let Marcelo and Kevin go so that they don't, regret doing what they've done by joining us and um, I, I mean I, I would suggest that they, they may want to stick around to at least watch one set of minutes being edited just for experience but it's up to them I will, I will um, that up to them yeah um, but I think it's a good idea to move towards reports. Peter any announcements any administrative stuff uh, nothing you know the two in, you know in particular uh, I will say that 
um, the affordable, um, sorry, the inclusionary zoning that uh, we are working on uh, to follow up to the housing inspection plan. Um, we are going to be producing a survey, uh, which will be going live sometime next week. I'll be mailing that out to the board. It's also going to hit Facebook um, in that uh, in that inclusionary zoning bylaw development is going to continue to churn forward um, to hopefully hit this uh, fall town, excuse me, uh, spring town meeting in the town meeting in May. Um, the date right now has not been set for annual town meeting. Um, however, um, according to the charter, we'll, we'll have a meeting the first week of May. Um, if no emergency order is declared um, regarding the municipal kind of um, nuances, uh, obviously we are still dealing with uh, Omicron, COVID-19, uh, and, uh, and we are doing the best we can. Right now, town hall is closed to appointment only. Uh, so if you do need to come to the building, please give me a heads up um, and I will make an appointment for you and or meet you uh, at the door for anything. So uh, Kevin, I did print out a copy of the bylaws for you. Um, and I missed you the other day when you came into the town clerk's office. And so I can either put those in your mailbox one day after uh, during the work day, um, just so you have them <coughs> and or you can pick them up at town hall. Uh, other than that, I think I am all set. All right, sounds uh, sounds good. Did we lose Deepa? Mm -hmm. No, Deepa. No, we lost here. Emma. I'm here. Oh, I not you're not showing up on my screen for some odd reason. Hmm. Okay, I'm glad you're still there. Okay. Um, uh, any other announcements? I, I did I did want to briefly share two pieces of information that came to my attention that I thought might impact planning board and although we cannot discuss those items and would have to set an agenda for them. Um, I wanted to highlight them because they came to my attention recently and and one was that the state of Massachusetts is in the process of seeking um, public comment on some draft guidelines to uh, um, to a law that impacts MBTA communities, and we are such a community because we have an MBTA station, and we received we receive funding as a community for construction expenditures relative to our infrastructure. So that makes us an MBTA community, and there are some regulations coming through that impact zoning. Certain zoning requirements have to be met within a certain distance of an MBTA station. Um, and okay. the state is collecting public comment um, and planning boards are able to provide public comment because that is a zoning issue. So I wanted the planning board to be aware of that and to consider having that on an agenda at some point for discussion so that the planning board could comment um, if we so choose since it would impact our zoning structure. And then the other item is, as you know, we are close to the town of Holliston and there is a project in Holliston called the ADESA, A-D-E-S-A -E facility that's seeking um, an overflow parking lot for approximately 500 or so vehicles. And that will require the use of car carriers um, potentially utilizing route 126 coming through Ashland um, and that particular planning board meeting I did attempt to attend today while you guys were doing your meeting I went to that one um, and that particular item was continued to February 17th and I, I do think it might be important for the planning board to put on the agenda and discuss if we wanted to review that particular project and make comment to the Holliston planning board as far as how it impacts the town of Ashland. Well, Peter, is that something you wanna get some uh, more information on for us? Yes, I will. Uh, I will take care. I can get some more information uh, on the project in Holliston um so it's the first time coming to my attention so thank you Anna. and i will uh make some phone calls and, and try to do some get some uh information on that um 
Anna, thank you so much. You did, you know, Anna was 100% correct. Um, Ask them, is it MDA to MDTA community? There were new regulations that uh, towns, all towns that have MDTA communities are going to have to deal with. Um, there are draft guidelines. I'm continuing to look at them. I had a brief conversation with uh, Lisa Mead, Attorney Mead, over them. Uh, there was a, um, a state run uh, webinar yesterday that both Emma and I attended. And so Emma and I are doing our, our, our our first research about what's going on and there's a lot of calculations that have to be done already. Um, there is a chance that Ashland's existing zoning will meet the criteria of the MBTA communities concerning the housing. Um, I will note that right now, it all this zoning stuff for the MBTA communities, it won't be, um, it will not be on the upcoming annual town meeting agenda, I would say. So regulations are not out yet. It's just a draft. They're taking comments. They haven't come out with the full, you know, full agenda. And they really haven't set a date for when we have to adopt this stuff by. But I will be presenting and, and also to note one of the one of the things that the planning office will have to do is make presentation to the planning board and the select board however there's not enough information about it there's still a lot of clarity that needs to be done um, or brought to the conversation before that takes place all right peter if it's something that you think we should be discussing um at least getting our feet wet with it for um january 27th let us know mm -hmm. otherwise um you know just just continue to report on it so we know when to jump in but I'll, let's I, not yeah what but i think we should just we need to get these meeting minutes done i agree Other, okay and we can talk about the rest later so are we good on announcements okay I mean, I, my own my only footnote is they're you know providing that kind of comment to the state has specific deadlines um, and I do want to make sure the planning board has an opportunity to discuss whether we want to make a comment. Um, so, so why don't you find out when the, why don't we find out when those de deadlines are and if our 27th meeting helped and we needed to put it on to meet the, the deadline, then we'll put it on the meeting for the um, January 27th. But obviously we can't do anything about it today or anything anytime. Yeah, before I, I raised it so we were aware. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and yep. Can you bring up the meeting minutes for October yes. 20th, Peter? So this is just the process we go through. The meet, meeting minutes get sent out. Um, what um, what I did with these meeting minutes, and I have been doing maybe just for the last couple meeting minutes, is I had asked Peter and Emma to send them to me first, where I can go through them in my kind of nitpicky way, make sure things were cl read clearly, um, picked up any formatting things. They then incorporated those and sent them out to the group to hopefully make our meeting minute process smoother. So um, Peter will bring them up and if anyone has um, changes on October 20th, we'll do that one first. So this is October 20th. Uh, I have in front, uh, it is up and I just need to scroll, excuse me. And um, I, I've, I've reviewed them and I don't have any changes. I reviewed them. <laughs> the only thing I noticed was the voting at the end instead of 500, it says 400. It looks like all of us were there for that planning retreat. So it's the last line when we ended the session. That was for the, actually, but we're not, we're on October 20th, which was a regular meeting, wasn't it? No, this no, is a October planning 20th board. was the retreat. That was the retreat. retreat. Okay. Yep. Sorry. That was the first retreat in uh, town hall. Because I think I left early that day, right? I think I left uh, um, early. So that's why maybe. That's what I assumed that I left early because that's the day Kavi came home. So I left early. Okay. Yeah, I thought I thought there was a note on one of those meeting minutes where 
There was one where Deepa wasn't there. That was the next planning board retreat I missed. Yep, and then, yeah. <laughs> so on the 20th, you think it should be four, do you think it's correct at 400 because Lakshmi needed to leave early? Yeah, I left, this was our retreat. This was the retreat meeting, right? On the, on the 20th? This is yeah. the first retreat meeting. Yeah, this was the first retreat meeting. I remember leaving early. Yes, this is the one down in the basement of the town hall. Mm -hmm. The second was upstairs in the regular hearing room. Okay. All right, so um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the October 20th meeting minutes as, as amended. I'll make a motion second. to accept the October 20th meeting as amended. Second that. Roll call vote. Lakshmi Krishnayan. Anna Tussman is gay. I, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Deepa Venkata, no worries, Anna. Anna Tussman is gay. I. Do I vote on this, Trisha? You actually don't vote because you weren't there. Uh, correct. <laughs> so, um, and Trisha Kendall I says a vote of 400 zero, zero, um, to accept the meeting minutes. And, and Marcelo, that's why I say it's true for all of these because you weren't there, so you actually yeah. don't get to vote either way. So, um, Oh, I've you. got to read them, but that, that, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so moving on to November 18th, which was a meeting meeting, right? Uh, that is correct. Uh, excuse me, I said the real and I... Yes, this is a meeting meeting. I uh, hope everyone can see the screen. This is a thing about continuing, right? Um. So this is when we close the public hearing for Zero Mogunkel Road, mm -hmm. knowing that there were a few things that we were going to add into the conditions um, I had no changes to the, to these. Yeah. I had no changes either. Me neither. All right. Do you want me to make a motion, Trisha? Please. I'll make a motion to, uh, to accept the November 18th minutes with changes as discussed. Um, I think in this case, this time. It's just I think it's just in this case, it's just as submitted. As is, as submitted, as submitted. Right. I second that. All right, roll call vote. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Deepa Venkata, aye. And then husband is the aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. So that's a vote of four, zero, zero. Okay. Uh, just want to make note, uh, Anna sent me some addition, uh, additional comments for the next two sets, which are going to be November 18th and November 23rd. Uh, and I have not been able to uh, add those um, additional comments in. However, I have saved them so I can bring those up on the screen. And I think you mean November 23rd and December 9th, right? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah. If, if it's easy to do, I think we just take care of it and let's get up to date. That'd be lovely if you can bring it up because I did it with like strikes out and color, so it's really easy. Yeah, it's super easy. Yeah. One minute. Let me share my screen. We are on the 23rd. Share screen. Okay. Um, There's a strike out here concerning Facebook. Yeah, I, I don't recall that we, I don't recall that we made that call that one was better than the other. So in, in fact, a couple of paragraphs later, we talk about discussing how to do it and whether we would have our own Facebook page. So I think that part should be taken out. No, it was actually a discussion um, that we talked about because I had posted from my personal Facebook account 
the meeting, um, oh, I don't remember which meeting it was, but I think Lakshmi said she saw it and there was all this yeah, people, yeah, um, yeah, because I had, per, even though I didn't, I only gave meeting information, I gave no, no other comment. There was a lot of, because I posted it from my personal account, there was a lot of flat. I got you. So maybe we just need, yeah. because I, I read this to mean who is going to be, okay, I misread what this is trying to say. So maybe, I mean, if we want to leave it, maybe just specify, but that these posts would, um, would not be made on a personal Facebook page right but rather would be on a planning board page okay okay so could we make that change but that but these posts would be best originate from a planning board website rather than a member's personal facebook page that's fair yeah that's fair uh and just a big note for tonight's meeting uh the agenda was posted to the town of ashland facebook calendar with the agenda attached uh and i know that went out was it what trisha were you able to find that yeah i did yep. okay awesome i, I think so. in the future we'll want to we might want to add a little bit more detail but but it was good that we got it out there okay awesome so are you able to correct that on the spot or are we comfortable you're comfortable you understand it we're comfortable going forward with it I'm asking you, Peter, because we yes. want to. Be oh, yes. No, I feel comfortable moving forward and I can correct okay. that. All right. Um, so, at a later time. Right. Was there anything else on those that. I think there's another page. Yep. Uh, so, comprehensive plan. Yeah. Plan so, what I did here. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I basically clarified that what we discussed was the actual elements of the statute, right? We had a piece of paper that outlined every single element right out of the statutory scheme. So the comprehensive plan statute has these elements and that's what we discussed. I believe I brought, I printed off a couple of copies of it and we went through it. So rather than saying that, you know, we could consider this for a comprehensive plan, this is literally right out of the statutory scheme. And I wanted it to be really clear here it's not like we're we have an option these are the elements and that's what we discussed um so i kind of cleaned it up a little bit so it was more clear what was on that piece of paper yep that all sounds fine to me it was i remember it was the yeah your topic that you discussed so um it, it's and good then you... and then the, towards the end um i just cleaned up um you know, that we wanted the support of the town manager and the select board. And also we talked about reaching out to various committees and organizations, right? Both mm -hmm. private and public, because in that mm -hmm. sheet of paper, we started talking about kind of the extent of that effort and what that would look like. So I cleaned that up a little bit. Yep. I am fine with those agenda, those changes as, as presented. And that was it. Deep oh. elect me. Were you? Yeah. Anything? I'm all set. You're all set? Mm -hmm. Falling asleep all set? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all good. <laughs> all right. Then I will, um, I will make a motion to accept the, because I think I can do that to accept the November 23rd meeting minutes as amended. I'll second that. Roll call vote. Lakshmi Krishnanai. I wasn't part of this meeting, so I oh, should oh, not be Anna, voting it. Anna Tesmanitsky, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. That is three, zero, zero. But we make it by the skin of our teeth getting that approved. <laughs> So. All right, and the last set of minutes is from uh, December 9th. Again, uh, I have changes for from Anna. However, uh, I have not put those into the uh, what was originally sent out. So I'm just going to bring up what uh, Anna sent me, if that's okay. And Anna, please feel free and walk us through. <laughs> Everyone see these? Uh, 
this is going to be Michael Herbert joined us uh, concerning the master plan conversation. Uh, and I believe all your changes are in yellow. Yeah, my changes are in yellow, and then I, 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 I you'll see what I'm striking out. Um, so I, I mean, the the big change I think is I wanted to make it really clear that at one point I asked Michael, okay, what's going to change in the fall, and he said, I'm really not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did not get the sense that capacity would necessarily change for the fall, and I wanted that to be clear in the minutes. Can you back up again, Peter, so we can see the? I got this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, right there. Yep. 23. And I did not recall the discussion of the free cash being available. That was when I read the minutes, I was surprised to see that because I do not recall that discussion at all. Um, yeah, I, I remember talking about free cash. If you do, then. Um, um, but I don't. I don't think I don't, rem I don't remember that happening at that meeting. Um, I mean, if, if someone recalls it, I did not that because I remember I, I when I read this, it was news to me that that was maybe I missed it. Do, do others in the board recall that? I, I, I can always go back and look at the minutes free cash is typically certified in the fall. And that's where you go back. And that's one of the pot of money that you can use in fall town meeting. Um, so it wouldn't make sense if we talked about back in the fall but I can I can uh, dive deeper into that conversation and go back yeah. and look at the recording I thought that's and why I mean, you... if and if it's there I would just edit that you know you could just you could just include it I mean I, I recall the discussion that there was a lack of capacity I did not recall a discussion about later finance if both are true just let's make both there okay yeah that's fair I think you talked about it and then uh, talked about how um uh, that's why the town meeting was so late this year because the free cash wasn't certified. appropriated or certified. Um, and, and typically it would be, we would have that um, town meeting earlier. So it was, he explained it maybe more detail than we needed, but, um, but he had talked about that. I thought at that time. Did we, did we hear that as there is no money in the spring? Because I heard it as there's no capacity in the spring. There is money, but no capacity. The, the, yeah, those are two different conversations about money and okay. time. Yeah. Got it. So, so I just don't want to confuse the two and make it seem like we were told there is no money for it in the spring. We were told there's no capacity in the spring and there happens to be separate discussion about money in the fall, right? The two are kind of separate, but it's came across in the minutes as if we cannot do it in the spring because there's no money. That's how I, it read to me. I thought that's what he was saying because, because because the cash isn't ready till the fall. And so right now all the cash, there's no cash, it's already spent from last fall. Okay, that's not, how I, that's not how I heard it. So if others oh. heard it the way Trisha did, then, then I could be wrong. Um, because the way I heard it was, was we don't have capacity, we're busy. The comprehensive plan may have to happen in the fall and we may still be busy in the fall. That's how I yeah, heard no, it. Yeah, I, no, I think the thing was that spring, no cash, no capacity fall cash but still might not be capacity that that's understood what I took in out that of it. case we need to add the lack of money that i took out peter so um so combine the two so waiting until the fall due to lack of capacity in the planning department and free cash uh, will be available in the fall okay. i'll take out i'll take care of it yep yeah, I think go back, you know, if you could double check the meeting minutes, Peter, and just make sure my memory is correct as well. Yep. Obviously, it needs to be right. Um, and I trust you to put in there as it should be. Okay. Yeah, let's make it accurate. And then I think that section that I added, the yellow sentence, is just to really clarify the capacity statement towards the end of the meeting when I asked Michael, well, what will change in the fall? And he said, you know, I'm really not sure. So Yes, that's true. He said um, that. So I, I really want this to be clear and accurate um, because as we discuss doing it, we want to be clear the public sees why we're not. Okay. Um, so if people are comfortable with it, I guess, but well, it's just the three, three of us or four of us, four of us on this one, right? Um, that we, is everyone comfortable just informally everyone's comfortable with peter looking at the tape and and clarifying 
-hmm. Yes. Verifying, yes. I should say. Okay. So um, uh, we're clarifying that earlier point, right, Tricia, about it being both capacity and money for the spring, mm -hmm. but the rest of the changes you're okay with? Yes. Yeah, okay. I am. I yeah. will clarify lines 21 to 26. Okay. Yeah. So um, the budget is in the fall town meeting, right? So that's why I think the free cash conversation also came. That's what I have in my notes. <clears throat> right. Is that, that, that's right, right, Peter? At least the free cash portion of the budget. Free cash mm -hmm. is always certified by DOR, Department of Revenue. And so typically oh, towns yeah. spend and allocate uh, free cash at a, yeah. at, a, at a fall town meeting, which is almost your midway point to kind of allocate funds to get you across to the next budget segment. And, okay. And balance sheet will be sent to DOR for free cash is what I have. Yep. And then DOR, DOR certifies it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will then make a motion to accept the December 9th meeting minutes um, to be amended, um, to be verified, I will say, um, by Peter. I'll make a motion for the December 9th as verified by Peter to be accepted once he verifies and makes the changes that we've discussed. <laughs> Sounds I, good. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> All right, uh, roll call vote. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Deepa Venkat, aye. Yana Tesmanitsky, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. That's four zero zero. Uh, to our new members, it is not my goal ever to have meetings go this late, but we had a lot on the agenda. I'm really happy we got through it because it was all kind of demanding. Um, and we will shoot to keep it more under control um, as, much, as much as possible. That said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn at 11 p.m. by my clock. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 11 p.m. Second second. Oh, All right. Sorry. <laughs> a roll call vote. Lakshmi Krishnan, aye. Deepa Venkat, aye. Anna Tesmanitsky, aye. Marcelo Hona, aye. And Trisha Kendall, aye. And Kevin, we're glad you're here as well. Thank yeah. you. Oh, welcome, Kevin. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks. Welcome, Marcelo. Marcelo. This thanks, night, everyone. Everyone. And thanks, Beth, for hanging out there in the background. I'm not sure. We, we need to get together and have a coffee. <laughs> All right. Talk to everyone soon. Have a great right, uh, night, holiday everybody. weekend. Good night, everyone. Bye. All right.